very interesting beginnings in my, my little world. Uh, you all eventually found yourselves as the unwelcome guests of uh, Viacorp, uh, although for exceedingly different reasons. Going down the list, uh, uh, Adnines woke up uh, tied to a table, apparently being repaired, but also seemingly against his will. He's currently suffering some mild who am I, uh, Jackie Chan syndrome. And, uh, well, he didn't exactly get off the worst as uh, Nova woke up after apparently being cryo-frozen for 50 years after a wee accident, uh, which he has not gone into detail with, so I shall not spoil it. Uh, Sammy, on the other hand, uh, found herself strapped to a table, though not quite as well as Adnine's, but she also didn't look nearly as threatening as him, so that's probably why. Uh, apparently having blood and hair samples taken because of her unique uh, fey origins, or, well, back when fey were fey. Uh, the bug, who's currently not here, got stepped on, and he's going to have to make a new character. Uh, am I hot mic anyone? I hear something. Uh, it's, I don't hear anything. Oh, we can start. Oh, we... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, please stop raping your mic. Mics have feelings too. Uh, Tax found himself in a jail cell with his abdomen hurting for some reason he has yet to explain. Um, the good doctor found himself apparently um, doo -doo -doo -doo, found himself in the basement area in the engineering department uh, apparently brainwashed by a psychic collar that unfortunately broke because of the resonance of a certain machine nearby. These things are quite fragile. The idiot who put it on apparently didn't know that. Uh, do, 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 do. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, the love-struck otter found himself in a cell opposite of Tex. Well, opposite and down a little bit, and uh, well, he was able to get himself out. You all got out, had a very interesting moment. Ad Nines nearly throttled uh, Nova trying to get his weapon and got uh, shanked for his troubles, but uh, you quickly realized that he apparently is immune to the security system and you were able to stick close to him. You eventually met up with the other three who witnessed, um, well, actually you stripped the alarm and then you met each other as, uh, well, the guard that Sammy had uh, taken as a escort. Um, let's just say he turned on you and uh, hit the security system, which pretty much raised the entire area at high alert. And he promptly got his brains uh, fizzled pretty good. Uh, which he did not survive from, believe it or not. So, you then made your way to the security desk, you fought off several waves of guards, and uh, you managed to evade the rest. Uh, you were running out uh, the back exit, which was the quickest way out from the current elevator you had, um, and you thought you were home clear. You uh, went through a sally port, uh, which is basically one door will close behind you, and for all I know, the dock probably welded it shut just to make certain the guards couldn't follow you. Unfortunately, when you uh, opened the door, you were greeted by this. Which wasn't good for anyone. Yeah. Apparently the siren sound effect is not working again. We didn't fight it. Alright. So that's pretty much where we left off. Uh, you guys come out uh, in an area. Uh, there are sirens going everywhere. You see various um, police officers, uh, uh, new Corona police officers behind their vehicles. Some of them have lethal weapons drawn in the form of uh, uh, semi-auto pistols. Uh, a couple of them even have long guns. Uh, and the others all have... Uh, Compliance rays, uh, which are basically non-lethal laser weapons. Uh, behind them are all are three drones, um, and there are four more circling you guys with their tasers deployed, just pretty much waiting to zap you if you so much as make the wrong kind of muscle movement. Uh, these three back here, the ones with the four and the feathers, on the other hand, uh, these ones are actually hovering up above, and they are uh, casting their spotlights on you, which is quite blinding at the moment. Uh, and the police are pretty much giving you commands to immediately drop your weapons and stand down. Uh, what do you do? I drop my weapon and say, I surrender. All right. 
Do I still uh, have my pistol out, or ha did I have a reason last time to stow that away again? You wouldn't have had a reason, I would think, because you were running through hallways with, you know, a guard could have popped out of any doorway or anything, so. Mm. I have a question. Do my uniform look like I belong in the company? Uh, no, you're still wearing the same clothing you had before. Well, I guess I'm dropping my pistol and put my hands up. Okay, so Adonis has surrendered. I surrender and say I'm just an employee. They don't seem to care over much. And I'm assuming Bob also, you power down Bob? Otherwise, Bob might cause a, a scene if you don't... Uh... He puts off his hands too. Except that his hands are literally his weapons. <laughs> so they don't uh, know that. Uh, it's pretty obvious, I believe. They yeah, power him down then. Okay. Yeah, you can't exactly hide the weapons. To do. Uh, let's just wait for. I see Marine on. Let's see if he can get in Discord. So we'll skip him for the moment and go to uh, Sammy. Yep, I put you. I sent you something in roll twenty. <laughs> Did you? Sorry, I didn't see it. No worries. Actually, let me refresh real quick because I'm currently talking to myself. A oh, wonderful little feature. That means that anything I type won't actually be saved, and you guys can't see it. Hmm. Okay, of course it puts me in the other game I was checking on quick. Damn it. I hate when it does that. Just one sec, kids. Do do do. Oh, did I just receive spooky sound effects? Mm-hmm. You know I'm all about sound. Oh, yeah, baby. Not exactly what I was going for, but close enough. Okay, there we go. Now we got the right atmosphere. I'm gonna raise my hands up and say I surrender. See. Uh. Hmm. Okay. Yes, you would have, Sammy. Okay. Sounds because you were about to go outside, and that might have been a good thing to do. But I'm not going to say what that was. Yeah. So she'll probably just raise her hands and put down the pistol that was the one she stole from the guard, or did I already give that away? I don't Depends. remember if he even is holding any weapons at the moment. I think he's not, so she's just gonna put her hands up and be like, Fine, sugar, I'll give in. Well, that one's actually not bad, Armand. Got it, man. Uh, anyhow, uh, Nova, what about you? Prizo? Yeah. Oh, there's Marine. There we go, here we have Marine. I probably already dismissed my weapon, but I will do that anyway, if I haven't yet. Okay. And, you and right just sneakily make it disappear. Okay. And I will, um, for now, I'll just holster my pistol in my belt. Okay. It's just a simple pistol. Well, these guys aren't taking any chances. What would, we, what would you if use? They, if they search me, I'm not like, resisting or anything. I also feel like it's not really a threat, so that's how I act. Yeah. Are they even saying anything? They are. They're, it's a, they all have their guns drawn on you, and they're giving you commands to immediately stand down, move out. Move out! Hands behind your back! Do it now! You're gonna get tased! Things like that, so. <laughs> Sammy, here's that. I mean... He's gonna scream, don't you fucking dare and tase me. Not again. Me, bro. She'll just go on her knees and put her hands behind her. 
Can I try convincing them that I'm after the police not officer the... That just said. <laughs> Can I try convincing that I'm not the grasshopper they are looking for? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Do they seem to know, well, I mean, given that, that some of them have long guns out and lethal and non-lethal weapons, they pretty much know that you guys are dangerous. I don't think that's gonna work, but, I mean, you can try. Everyone else is surrendering, so. Yep. Unfortunately, it's uh, not enough, and uh, they immediately shine, well, the drone immediately shines you right in your uh, your multifaceted eyes and says, Just drop the weapon! Do it now! Not gonna tell you again! I'll just put it down and be like, okay, I'll just work here. I was running for my life. They don't seem to care terribly much. All right, so we avoided a combat counter. Uh, you, <laughs> you guys, uh, the guard, the uh, various drones continue to hover around as several officers move in, and they take you one by one, and they uh, immediately cuff you. There are both uh, female and male officers here, and you are probably padded down initially um so anything that you've hidden well enough they don't find because these guys aren't exactly like you know super troopers they're just uh your run-of-the-mill cops so assuming they don't find anything they will uh put you in the back of a squad car in pairs uh so all right one will... thing i forgot one thing um our stuff from last session did we get everything back basically or you got all your standard equipment back yes Okay, so I have my backpack right now with everything. Yeah, with your, with your everything in it. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting. Um, I just we're... want to make sure: am I supposed to be able to see anything, or is it supposed to be a black square? No. Can you guys not see? I oh, I see a cone. I see. Uh, I like yeah, we still have we still have text colors. Uh, Telepathy, right? So we can talk without them hearing us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't see I'll... any. Uh, well, you're assuming that none of these uh, cops are Lashunta. Uh, you can't see any Lashunta at the moment, but there could be some. Uh, I'm gonna... mean they can overhear you if you're speaking telepathically. Like, I don't mm. think so. Uh, there's a chance that they might be the kind that can, but it's not a guaranteed. So it's going to disable them because I was doing it with dramatic lighting. I'm gonna ask them if they need me. If I'm allowed to activate the robot to go into the squad car. Uh, they, they, they say, don't you dare. And uh, they say, we'll take care of your robot. Come on, in the car. Not going to ask you nicely. You get, uh, you all get manhandled into uh, cars, depending on how much you resist. If you're being, if you're being a good little boy or girl, they uh, will not manhandle you too badly. You're immediately I put in. But, I mean, you know, Sammy's gonna be very polite to this lovely police officer who's ever gonna handle her. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you should all be able to see the wonderful little scene that I've made for you of your imminent demise <laughs> in the hands oh, of law enforcement. Interesting. Yeah. If, if I scroll them? up and down to cone moves, that's fun. Yeah, I just, I'm just. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was that's a strange bug. Uh, if you refresh, it'll go away, but it's not okay. important. So, Thanks. Uh, you end up uh, all put in squad cars. You're put into, uh, well, they seem to be minimizing the number. So you don't know what happens to Bob. You're assuming that they call uh, a wrecker or something to grab him because he's too big to be put in the car. Uh, two of you get put in each car with the exception of, of uh, one of the cars where they just throw the otter in there too. So... <laughs> Your, uh, actually, let's roll. Everyone, roll a D two for me. Let's find out who's in who's in what car on the way back. Because despite all the cars they brought, they only decided to use that many. All right. So Sammy Nova are in one car. <laughs> Put the in the same car. That's lovely. That's a smart play. Okay, and then Tax and Magnus and uh, Adnines are in the other one. Okay. I think Adnines stumbled. Adnines is a D2, no D4. I'm gonna be a special snowflake. Do they read our Miranda rights? Yeah, they give you, well, they give you the rights on your way there. Or I should say the hololith on the uh, back of the seat gives it to you. And it's just a, uh, basically a a holographic projector. Sorry. Mm. Okay, so did they uh, try to actually remove Doc? Bob. They'll throw you and Bob in uh, one car because they can't be bothered to figure out how to fold Bob. Bob, so they just throw him in the back. 
course, they actually you actually see them playing rock paper scissors to see who has to get their car messed up by the greasy robot. So there, there's that small revenge at least. Okay, so but that's the cars you end up in. And, uh, the cars immediately begin to take off. They are actually hover vehicles, uh, so they immediately begin to take off and begin to fly you through the city. Uh, it is um, at, at this part of the city. Uh, it's in the middle of the night. Uh, the solar shade is covering this part of the city, hence covering it in darkness. Um, you all... Let me recognize any places? Or not at all? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, these uh, cars do have fairly good windows on them, so you can look out, and they have yet to turn on the uh, uh, opaque function, so... They also have closed the divider, so you are at... I mean, you're probably still being monitored, but, you know, the cops at least aren't over-listening you. Mm. So, um, you make out bits and pieces, Sammy, of th places you think you know uh, by various landmarks, but you realize you're a little bit outside of your normal territory for certain. Okay. Probably going to a pretty far away precinct at that. Uh, the city actually has, unsurprisingly, quite a few precincts to uh, govern it. And these cars, as I said, do fly. They are hover cars. So you're fl uh, flown through the city. It's a fairly long ride. So, Sammy, Nova, on your ride home, do you say anything to each other? And you can speak telepathically, so... I was about to say, we're Um, I mean, Sammy's gonna try and figure out if the people driving aren't Lishinta, aka looking for the antennae. They uh, don't appear to have them. Most Lishinta will have uh, modified hats to allow their antenna to poke through, just because it's uncomfortable to put them underneath of a, a helmet. Mm. Well, in that case, Yusuke's gonna look uh, straight ahead and um, beam into his mind like, so, what were you in for? Well, that's a long story. The story I... per se, but it was long. <laughs> I believe we have time. Well, I had 50 years, apparently. Hmm. I just came out of cryo, apparently. Oh, you must be freezing, darling. He is actually still faintly <laughs> cold to the touch. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, when he. When yeah, he says one. that, um, Sammy, roll me a culture check, please. Yep. Coming up. As you know things about all kinds of stuff. Oh, yep, you don't know, unfortunately. <laughs> Except for this one. Yeah, you're drawing a blank. You had it, you had something, and then you had an adorable little sneeze, and then you completely forgot what you were going to say. Yep. Ooh, pretty lights. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you pass by a large tanker that has a rather obnoxiously LED dancing chibi figure porting something. You see them all over the uh, the city. You've also been, as I said, stripped of any obvious uh, paraphernalia that you have on you. Anything hidden, you still have. Uh, they did take your backpack, though, so you're missing in your armor, quote, quote unquote, at the moment. Yeah, so. and maybe her PDA. Yeah, no, they, they took that from you as well, unless it was hidden. I was Is about to say, she probably stuffed that in her bra. <laughs> So if they would go in there, that would be a different problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, That's what you have female cops for, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, not to grope in there, though. Uh, given the vet, given that the officer that was was patting you down was a female vesk, I think you would have given that over pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, I mean, in fair, she was fairly gentle for being, you know, seven foot five. <laughs> Mm. So, uh, with that conversation concluded, we're going to move over to uh, Adnines, Tax, and Magnus, who's pretty much just sitting on you know two of your legs, just kind of like, really, you guys couldn't spring for one more, one more car. Mm. So, did the three of you say anything to each other? I let out a frustrated grunt. Better not say anything to them. They'll use that. With any luck, 
we can get a lawyer and get out of here. I mean, what are they gonna charge us with breaking out from being... Well, actually, I don't know what you are in for, but... They pretty much just... Threw me in here without reason, so... Hmm. You would, of course, remember that the Megacorps rule new Corona pretty much. Yeah. Unofficially, so... They can get away with quite a lot. Although this might be stretching it just a little bit, depending. They were there pretty quickly. I don't know if the... Um, do, do I know where I am, roughly, in the city? From what I can see through the windows? Uh, make a perception check. Okay. I can tell you. Right. Sorry, I'm just doing something real quick. Okay. All right, so, yeah, you uh, actually managed to, uh, in the distance, spot the building where your adventure started. It's still there. Um, well, given the, that rough location, you could pretty much figure out where you are. Uh, you're fairly certain, uh, since you've been on New Corona for a little bit now, um, that you're going to the 337th Precinct. And uh, how close is the police department to the Viacorp building? And is this the headquarters or? Uh, this was Viatech headquarters. Uh, as you're pulling away, you all see that it's a very large building with uh, a, hol a holographic display on it that is key to pretty much uh, using psychic crystals. Anyone who looks at it uh, will see the text upon it in the whatever language they are most familiar with so uh for uh, sam you know but that's obviously the shunta and you know so on and so forth if not it's in common but yes this was the viacorp uh main building that you just uh, apparently escaped from okay and um do i know where the police department is here and can i judge from when the alarm started like how fast exactly they got here like is it unusually fast or um, with your roll me, uh, did you have a profession or a uh, no. what, what was your background again? Um, you know, archaeologist. All right, just roll me a flat culture then, because this is kind of to do with the planet's culture in a manner of speaking. Hmm. So, yeah, 17. Okay. All right. Uh, you're fairly certain they got here within the allotted five minute time and uh, then simply waited for you. They must have been, uh, they're likely tripped a silent alarm. Mm. Not so silent alarm as it may be, and that tipped off the police. Uh, the 337th precinct is actually strangely a little bit far. You're passing over two other much closer precincts to go to the 337th, which is odd, but. It, you know, it could be any number of reasons. It could just be that those precincts are currently over overcrowded, and yeah. they're simply moving you to a, a slightly farther away one. It's not like you're going to the opposite side of the city, which, you know, that would be like an hour trip, even at these speeds. All right. So, that much you know. Uh, Tex, what about you? Are you saying anything, or are you just... Uh... I'm just sitting here quietly, thinking... Like, how the hell did I get into this? Where the hell am I? What the hell is happening? I swear I was a nice... Uh, you would notice your thorax is, is hurting a lot, and you're not exactly sure why. But it's been hurting uh, ever since you escaped, which you kind of forgot about it during the firefight. You're not pregnant, are you? I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Assuming you, well, you can't actually feel around because you have uh, handcuffs on, and they did actually, uh, well, you can't use your other little limbs. They're kind of useless for this specific task, and it's actually considered very crass to use them for anything but mating rituals. Uh, so you're fortunately unable to check, but it does hit, mm hmm, 
Make me a perception check to kind of try to feel out your senses here. See if you've had a wound like this in the past, maybe. Um, it just feels sore from the inside is the best way to describe it. Just achy and sore for un unspecified reasons. Definitely not the I've made it thing, though. That much you're I've really been by an alien. I'm telling you this now. It's going to burst out of my stomach and eat other people. Uh, I hate to break it to you, you are the alien bug. <laughs> <laughs> so. so, what what do you think they got on you? I'll telepathically reply back. Honestly, um, nothing as far as I can remember. Been kind of good. Save people's lives, that kind of thing. Mm. Nothing I can think of that's against the law other than, I guess, breaking out from there. Well, I mean, to begin with, why does Firecorp have a prison? That seems a little bit off the grid, I'd say. Can I, can I roll a culture to realize that that wasn't a prison and that was a la like a holding cell for lab experiments? I mean, you don't even need to roll. You're, that's fairly obvious to all of you. And I'll be like, um, I don't think that was a prison. I think we were being tested on. Well, I didn't consent to that. So, what the hell is up I with don't that? Think, I don't think any of us did. Adnans, did you? Well, first of all, I haven't told you my name, Tex. And, uh, second off, okay. uh, he Robot was saying, boy. no... We don't know he's a robot either. He's just a helmet dude or something. Yeah, it's a character. I'm sure he, he would have displayed Android features, whether he's walking and so forth. Uh, no, I mean, it's very hard to notice at the point. Uh, the only thing you can see, um, actually, maybe a perception test. Uh, the odd times that Ad9 has looked at you, that might be a giveaway, depending on how good you roll. Gonna have to be pretty high though. Me too. Yeah, you do notice it through the uh, hole in his helmet. You do see the uh, holographic uh, markings that mark out a uh, android. He's very clearly an android. Hey, Ray yeah. Woodboy. What you did you give consent to? And this is in your head right now. He will lift up his head, and uh, through the hole in his visor, you see his eye. Almost like a camera narrow on his on the uh, Texala's face, and he will say, "No, get oh. out, disembark, leave, not be here." Well, I guess that answers that. None of us are supposed to be here. We but must leave here, not be here. Do you have plan to get out? Well, I mean, I we'd have to improvise, but I'm not sure killing any more people would help any one of us. I'm. Um, I want to look around, and specifically, I'm looking um, for possible. Like, uh, I know, is this like uh, basically a police van? You know, with the is there a driver in in the front? Uh, there are there's a driver and a passenger, two police officers, um, mm -hmm. and you're currently flying about 500 feet off the ground. Okay, uh, is there a way for them to enter inside, like a door on the on the back? No. Uh, the only okay. the only way to get you guys in and out is the side doors that you're putting. Yeah. It's basically a flying four door, and there is a uh, uh -huh. privacy they screen that uh, see through pri privacy screen that's okay. kind of blocking you from the uh, police officers is, is, is it as if this is meant to keep you separate from them <laughs> so. i see i see so um you said privacy screen is it breakable uh probably not it's probably reinforced uh can you lower it they can uh Mm -hmm. You you kind of have your hands behind your back at the moment, so. I see, see, see. Yeah. He's going You're all eye robot on the. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I 
I'm not telling you what I was planning, but uh, not gonna work if there's no back door for if there's no door for them to you know get up and enter inside. Um, no, it's it's basically a flying squad car. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Well, uh, no chance then. I suppose I don't have a plan then. Right. The android does not have a plan. Whatever shall we do? Is that guy's game over? <laughs> so. uh, no dice then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and I guess we'll move finally to the uh, doctor and his robot who is uh, currently offline. Although you think you might be able to reactivate him uh, if you wanted to. Although uh, both of his uh, hands have been basically magnetically clamped together, um, and it's also emitting a low-frequency EMP that uh, is going to prevent him from using e any of his weapons. Uh, I think they basically did that with my prosthetic too. Uh, yeah, they would have done. If you had an obvious prosthetic, you would have had your... Uh, basically, one of the manacles would have had a second manacle put around it, and it would basically EMP your arm, making it useless. It gives you just enough strength to move it around, but not much else. I guess the f they know that I have a custom rig on my arm and that stuff. Yeah, uh, they well, they pretty much disabled that. As I said, these guys deal with people like uh, you all the time, dangerous uh, techies and whatnot, so they have to Oh, oh Jesus fucking Christ, what the fuck? Yeah, can you... Ow. Can you Scott, work on? What did you do to your microphone? Jesus, man. Yeah, I, I think he ate it. Yeah, I don't know what that was, but that hurt. Please don't do that again. That actually physically hurt my ears. Verd, you're gonna have to edit that out if you plan to upload it. It wasn't that bad for me, but okay. Well, so uh... trying to stop. Just get a fucking mic then, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I don't want to sound rude, but... Damn. Yeah, that's... it's like fucking ear rape, dude. That's it's not really nice. <laughs> so, I mean, try to sort that out if you can between sessions, because that's kind of an issue. Anyhow, uh, do you do anything with your robot, given that you're alone in the car with him? Well, I mean, as alone as being away from two cops as... <laughs> Hello? I guess he must be having mic problems. So, anyhow. Yeah. We'll uh, move on from there, I suppose. Uh, and you eventually will re arrive at the precinct. Although to call it a precinct as you know it in the modern world would be a bit of an understatement. They're actually, uh, despite there being a, a 400 some precincts they're actually all fairly large remember this is one gigantic continent sized mega city so it requires a lot of uh precincts of various sizes depending on the area the precinct you're going to is actually one of the larger ones and it would pretty much pretty much looks like this as you're led inside you go through a uh, very simple lobby there's plenty of other uh people in for various things uh some manacled up a couple actually in more uh, sophisticated restraints to keep them on in line. Uh, you aren't actually sat in the waiting area, though. You're just moved along. Um, process quite quickly. Uh, they move you into a, a separate area and to a full body scanner where you are scanned uh, head to toe. And this scanner is sophisticated enough that it can detect all your hidden weapons. And they're promptly taken from you uh, by some very begr uh, begrudging cops who don't like the fact that you had a gun on you the entire time. It uh, makes them a little jumpy, knowing someone is still armed. And not in the I'm a vest, I have claws kind of way. I'm so sorry for making this joke, but did they have a Rick and Morty machine that checks your butt? <laughs> um, I'll just say that this, that machine is very thorough, but it doesn't actually <laughs> physically probe you. They, they, they are well aware, and yes, the otter has his uh, otter space gun taken away from them. <laughs> I already dropped that, though. Okay. He already pooped it out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We are mature people. Yeah. Does Sammy recognize anyone in the cells at the moment? Uh, make a... Did you... Make a perception check. Of course. 
coarse echo of Jake. Yeah, I sound wonderful. There you go. Okay. Um, you see several gangs that you recognize that, uh, you know, bang in that area. You see several, uh, you know, people, various merc companies who look like they're just in because they might have accidentally discharged their gun in the wrong place. Just the normal stuff. You don't see anyone particular at the moment. Anyone who's looking weird at her? I mean, you've already heard at least three wolf whistles as you've gone by. Not the kind of weird that I was intending, but, Up you there. know, that's fine. <laughs> ah. Then more like I... recognizes her. No, unfortunately, uh, so far you are actually keeping a relatively low profile, uh, relatively speaking. What do you mean, unfortunately? She's really happy with that. <laughs> well, then she's just going to play the part and, uh, you know, flirt with the guys here and there, have some fun. <laughs> ah. Hi, boys. Hmm. You see uh, some of the guards just going to... Mm. Kind of just turn back to what they were doing. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, they seem to be all business here. Hmm. So you're quickly uh, processed. Uh, they remove... Uh, they, they leave you in your armor uh, because you and your armor isn't inherently a threat. Uh, you do see more of those drones are around. Uh, you're in a fairly heavily secured area and you're placed in one of these uh, cells after you are uh, processed, which means they're taking your mug shots. And as this is happening, I need everyone to roll a perception check. Do you want a new one? Or do you want me to go with my old one? I'll let you go with the old one, because I don't like uh, forcing law of averages on people. So, 9, 20, okay. So, Doctor definitely notices this. Uh, Adnines notices, Sammy notices. And are we missing anyone? I think that's everyone. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, uh, the bug has not rolled. Hey, hey Mr. Mr. Cockroach, roll, roll is this thing. Marine, All right, Marine. Fuck, just All right fuck you too then. <laughs> also, Skogs, can you please mute if you're not talking because um, it creates an echo. I don't hear any echo from Skogs for the whole... You I heard it when no, Jake no, was talking. I, I hear it, and it's it's, it's quite annoying. It, I'm not it happened last. It. No, no, yeah. it happened last session as well. And I yeah, I heard that, but not this time. Yeah, Skugs, you, you need to you need to do something about it because it's it's really. Uh... Well, I mean, just get a basic pair of headsets, dude. That would fix everything. Anyhow, enough mm -hmm. ragging on that. Uh, the doctor, you definitely notice this, as does, uh, and you're the first to notice this. As you're lining up your mugshot, a drone comes by, um, very similar to the one Magnus saw earlier. Um, and it uh, immediately begins taking a, pretty much a three-dimensional body scan of you, uh, which is basically their version of mugshots. Uh, so they pretty much now have a 3D scan of you. But as the drone uh, goes back to upload to the computer, you see a little yellow goblin-like face uh, briefly appear on the... Uh, screen and then vanish and when uh sammy and uh adnines you're up you notice the same thing uh although mm -hmm. you only see it briefly uh doctor you know what that thing is you know that is a uh, glitch gremlin uh a very nasty little program that can get into things and make a mess but this one seems to be very low-key which is very strange as glitch goblins are very well like any goblin they're exceedingly obnoxious creatures so Sammy familiar with this type of glitch goblin? You've heard of them. You've seen techies using them. You know that they're really difficult to control. Uh, attacks you do not notice the glitch goblin. Um, I don't talk, Joe. It takes a very specific kind of person to... Uh, well, you, you don't really tame them. They are sentient creatures. They're just sentient creatures that are purely... Uh, uh, purely uh, on the extranet. But they uh, they can materialize themselves for brief periods of time by zapping the power out of computers to basically take a semi corporeal form. Although they are still difficult to hurt, and you can't actually destroy them by destroying their physical body, they just zip back into a a piece of electronics. So basically, you have to befriend them, and you know, and that's a pretty difficult proposition as they are goblins, so that they're 
hell bent on always causing trouble somewhere. How so. could you go about befriending them? And also, does Semi know of any of her contacts who would have this at their disposal? Hmm. Make a culture check to kind of rifle through your uh, list of known uh, associates. Yep. <laughs> I'm rolling really bad for culture today. <laughs> well, in fairness, the DC was down by five, so it wasn't that bad. Uh, That's true. You, you know circles of people that have, uh, well, a lot of people claim it's kind of like a big thing in the techie world to actually proclaim that you've uh, wrangled a glitch goblin to be your you know, servant, friend, cohort, mischief maker. You know, they all have different names for it. But mm. no one's coming to mind at the moment. Okay. Uh, but the fact that that glitch goblin is there, of all things... Maybe it's telling you that the 3D scans that just got taken of you might not have, uh, well, taken, so to speak. Been safe. The, That's good. Yeah. yeah. But the gob, the the, uh, the police don't seem to be aware of it as they're just so into the hum. You've been passed off at this point to uh, just station workers and they don't seem to be on high alert. So they're not really looking. They're just, you know, you're just another bunch of rank and file thugs. You've got to be put away. So after they take the scans of you, um, they all put you in one cell. Actually, these cells are quite large and there are fold out um, bunks, uh, three to each side uh, that are going to be your quarters for tonight, apparently. Uh, and then a very heavy uh, metal grate uh, goes by and you also notice very faint arcing electricity. Uh, it, it very clearly is electrified. Okay. Are we still cuffed? Uh, you, you had your cuffs taken off. Okay. Basically, so there's a small port where you can put your hands through, and then they uh, take your cuffs on. And the the, uh, the big vest uh, guard that was putting you in and says, "Enjoy your stay. You're gonna be here a while, thugs." And he kind of just spits on the ground and walks away. I growl at him. Sammy's gonna smile. Like, well, thank uh, you there. Hope to see you soon. But, congratulations. You just growled at a vest. Make me an intimidate check. Uh, <laughs> see you can... Oh, boy. Oh, it's on now, motherfucker. Oh, dear. Yeah, precisely oh. because <laughs> vests yeah, don't he... fight anything that doesn't provoke, but. Yeah, he growls back at you like an angry crocodile. He says, Not worth my time, small fry. And then he promptly, uh, Slaps his tail against the the side, uh, just enough that it it shakes the bars. But uh, apparently, he hits a part that either not electrified or he is so used to it he doesn't care. Anyhow, uh, you're left in the cell for uh, some time. Uh, you're all together and as alone as you're gonna get in this situation. Do you? What do you do? I mean, you're kind of all looking at each other, at this trying to figure out what all of you have in common. Um, that would have gathered via corpse interest in you. So Sammy's going to explore a cell and try to find any piece of electronic he can find. Uh, I would like to know if there's, if I know of any way they would restrict magic use in a prison. Um, go ahead, and make a mysticism check for me, and then uh, uh, Sammy, make a perception check for your individuals. Um, you kind of focus for a minute, uh, projecting your uh, psychic presence out, and you notice that immediately it starts to become dampened, um, not terribly far away from you, and it's very difficult to contract uh, um, uh, to concentrate on anything that's more than a hand, uh, an arm's length away from you. There's some kind of uh, psionic dampening. Uh, there might be psionically dan uh, dense metals that are worked into certain parts. It doesn't seem like it's a complete uh, shutout cell, you know, where they put psychics so that you can't use your abilities at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, they definitely have dampening. It's going to require pretty much a caster level check to do anything in here. <sighs> and Sammy, looking around, uh, everything is unfortunately mechanical. Uh, even the door that uh, slid on and the electrical mechanism appears to be like literally inside of the bars. Uh, there's nothing that you can immediately get access to at the moment. Okay. What are the rest uh, of you doing? I, I have a question. Uh, I have my... What's happening again? Ow. <laughs> Guys, just turn Skoks down a bit if it's that painful. I'm going to do that, Doesn't actually. Doesn't really fix I, um, the overarching problem, but sure. Yeah. 
No, it's not gonna fix the overarching problem, but at least it won't rape their ears every time it happens. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know, can you, like, did you try resetting some stuff? Putting Do you it have out, a spare it microphone, again? Skogs? I mean, I got mine from a small town in northern Ukraine that was abandoned 20 years ago, and my microphone is still not as bad as yours. That's oddly specific. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just let he, he can just type for now, I guess. Oh, there he goes. Hmm. Also, if you guys wouldn't mind, would you uh, go about choosing unique colors for yourselves um, with the uh, markers? Because it would be it would helpful. A lot of you guys have very similar colors. Um. Well, I took my go. purple because it's perfect. Was good, but I mean, yeah, whoever I'll wants take to bright change. red then. Okay. But... So, uh, well, now marine and app lines are <laughs> pretty much the same color. Yeah, I'm so. changing it. Like, as you say, rock red, I chose red. I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> rock, paper, scissors for it. Or I, I can take black, I guess. Yeah, that works. Mm. Yeah, I'll Herman take black. And, Herman and over a little close, but that's fine. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna wait on uh, him for a minute. We're gonna move on to someone else. Uh, what were the rest um, of you doing? Can I try and actually speak to anyone nearby me? Is anyone in cells near me? Like um, Magnus? Or... I hope I didn't come across You're as all in the same cell, for reference. You're in basically a giant holding cell. It's not a, an actual prison cell. Uh, it's more like the holding cell that they throw drunks in at the police station. Oh, no, uh, I know so what you're talking office. about. We're all just together at this point. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's just a nightly holding cell. It's like processing cell. Yeah, pretty much. You guys have been processed, or at least so they think you've been processed. But uh, yeah. Uh, oops. Move that. Okay. <laughs> so you are here. Uh, do you choose to do anything before I choose to advance the plot? I see oh, Sammy is... checking the cell, and I ask. Do you know if they record what we say here? Does Sammy know? Uh, you're fairly certain that there are mics uh, somewhere. They're probably not He's in your gonna cell. Nod. Not say anything, but nod. I'm just gonna go telepathically to everyone and be like, um, "Do you think we could escape from here? I don't, really don't want to be here." Sammy smiles and um, telepathically speaks back. I'm sure I could arrange something with that guard. Or, you know, the guys who were oogling me before. I want to see if the guards, if there's like a patrol route of the guards or anything like that. Uh, you do see well. uh, some more of those drones uh, patrolling about, but they seem to be the only ones patrolling the cell block. You see, uh, you hear guards, but they're on uh, two levels above you talking to each other. Just some idle small talk that you, you can barely make out. It's fairly quiet. There aren't many. There aren't many people, and if there are, they're either sleeping or they're behaving themselves at the moment. There's no uh, large disturbances. It's effectively a quiet night at the lockup. I respect uh, celebrity as well. What the hell did you guys do? Um, I did nothing. The last I remember, I was being darted and thrown mines at, but. Nothing I remember I should get arrested. Well, then you have nothing to worry about, right? Well, we kind of all did kill those two guards. Yeah. They well, five guards. They shot at us first. It was self-defense. Mm, I don't think the corporations will allow you to argue that. So, were you on all experimented on as well at Valley Corp? Ah, uh, are my hands free? Uh, they are. As Sammy says that, I'm gonna remember to look at my thorax and be like, oh, now I wonder where that pain's coming from. So you're kind of feeling down uh, your, your, basically your insect rump, and you uh, notice immediately that there was uh, a small incision uh, put in it uh, at the between the gaps of your shift and uh, it isn't very large, probably just enough for a small probe to look around inside, and it must have looked around inside a lot because it hurts. But other than that, they don't seem to have done anything. The extent of it, you're you're not a medical expert. You need to get someone to check you out to see what the hell happened. 
Could I use physical science to bring back would, like would be what's life actually there? Uh, um, you, you, yeah. If I know what's actually parts of my body are in there. <laughs> Like you know, you know your heart's in your chest, and your lungs are by your heart. Yeah, you, you. I mean, you went to school. You understand uh, how your uh, special anatomy. In fact, you had a, a special course to be pulled aside, given that you're a host, and you know, basically given the rundown about how, your role and whatnot during on Sex Ed Day. Uh, um, honestly, it it definitely just looks like it was just a probe to look inside of you, maybe take samples. Um, you do notice, uh, looking at Sammy, that she's missing a little bit of fuzz on one of her antenna, and she's also... Her hair looks, has seen better days, as it's missing a few locks that have been cropped off. Um, and with the exception of Nova, all of you look like uh, small samples have been taken, uh, kind of like as you're kind of maybe cleaning yourself, uh, Verd, as, uh, or Magnus, as, you know, cute otters do. Uh, you notice that some of your hairs are a little shorter than you remember them being. You think they might have taken samples of you as well. Hmm. Uh, with the exception of Nova, no, all of you are, you know, had samples of some kind taking. Um, Ad nines, uh, you are still allowed to keep your helmet. And I should note that uh, of all the things that were taken, the one thing that they did not take again, Magnus, is they did not take your locket. Uh, one of the officers looked at it when he took it from you. Saw, you know, he popped it open. Saw it was a picture of a female. Uh, of your species and then just handed it back to you telling you not to do anything funny with it mm -hmm. i mean they did have to take off my helmet for a mug shot so i assume they probably took it off all right um, actually you're correct so they did take it off um kind of feeling around your head um you do feel that uh the hole that where you got shot um is pretty much repaired slash healed it's kind of a mixed bag being an android technically both can work uh, as you are a synthetic living organism, as opposed to quite literally a robot. Um, but it, they've done a rather rough job, and it, it's left the equivalent of a large metallic scar. Um, and feeling on the feeling on the back of your head, you also feel um, a very small uh, wound on the back. It doesn't feel big enough for a bullet to have passed through, especially not a bullet the size that you got hit with. Uh, but it uh, definitely. Uh, basically went through your head. Uh, it only went... Um, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, put this. Actually, maybe I'll just put an image of a skull. Hold on real quick. And I will show you the rough path of the bullet went through your, your cranium. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> That's mean, probably what my... I'm thinking um, about Peter Gage, but you know... It's probably what my android uh, hood is uh, showing. It's like, look, here's how you died. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your systems are still trying to frantically figure out what the heck happened. They're basically... I... You're still running diagnostics, but they're now in the background. Yeah. They're basically things that you can't control anymore. Uh, you really yeah, couldn't probably. control them before. They were just displayed to you because, you know, they thought you were dying, and it's kind of important for you to know things like that. Yeah. Uh, one sec. Also, Sammy, seeing everyone get ex examined themselves, be like, well, apparently we all did. That's fun. So did any of you see our little yellow goblin friend? Which one goblin? It before? <laughs> I didn't see it, right? It's going to be good. Uh, the only ones that saw it were Ad Nines, uh, the Doctor, and Sammy. You did not see it. I saw it. I did see one a lot earlier, right? When I was in the room where I first came out of? You did not see one, actually, no. Or was that somebody else? That I uh, some kind of automated one. process just uh, chose to defaul you for some reason. You don't know the details. But do you see that line, uh, Bird? Or, uh, Armin? I'm going to be there. Yeah, I, I saw it. Uh, yes, that is very nasty. Um, That's the path the bullet took through your head. It didn't quite get all the way out, but you don't feel it anymore, so they must have removed it, and they effectively patched you up. I mean, okay. you're still a conscious, thinking individual. You're not having crazy thoughts, but you're still suffering the consequences of literally getting shot in the head. It's going to be a I long time. I have recovery. several crazy thoughts, but I won't wear them right now because there are microphones in this cell. 
well, not in the cell specifically, but nearby enough that they can hear chatter that isn't a whisper. Uh, you're fairly certain, though, um, the two Lashinta know that uh, telepathic eavesdropping on a, a large scale that isn't like having a person who knows how to do it nearby is way too expensive. So telepathic communication is safe to use. Okay. Um, using Texala, I will telepathically ask how do we get out? Get out. Well, I would say first we wait and figure that out and not do anything rash. I would at least like what I'm being charged with. This is and ridiculous. Specifically, I will ask um, Sammy, uh, did you see the yellow thing? It I did. Us. I think we have a friend on our side. I think we'd better sit quietly for now and see what happens. Agreed. And then she's gonna sit on a... I'm assuming there's some kind of bed or bench or whatever. Yeah, there are six uh, fold-out beds. These these uh, cubes are about 20 by 20 uh, holding cells, and they have three beds on either side. Yeah, so she's just out. gonna sit down on the bed and lean against the wall and uh, fix her hair up a bit and be like, Damn it, I don't like asymmetric cuts. He's saying that aloud, by the way, that there is no use for that to be said telepathically. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Sammy, if, if anyone can work with it, it's definitely you. Yeah, that's true. Definitely going to have to style it a little bit differently. Is The person that cut it clearly was not a stylist. Nope. No shocker. <laughs> yeah, so she is basically doing that and uh, laying her head against the wall and just relaxing. You, you thankfully the uh, fuzz on your antenna will grow back faster than your hair so that'll probably go away in a week or so yeah and there's also ki all kinds of over-the-counter you know uh hair growth injections you can get and whatnot it's all that stuff is very commonplace in uh um in this this futuristic world just general body modification that isn't you know doesn't require you're not messing with the mass of your body like changing your hair color lip color things like that like, you mm -hmm. can literally get dye that you uh, work into your hair, and it will literally change the color of your hair to grow that way uh, for an extended period of time. It needs to yep. be renewed, depending, it depends a lot on individual biology and whatnot. Just like all hair care products, there's, you know, because my mother is a hairstylist, so I know these things. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I should, you know, uh, but, you know, everyone's biology is different, so not all. But generally speaking, yep. it will work for a long period of time. So you guys end up sitting mm. in the cell for about only about another 10 minutes before you uh, start to hear a procession of feet walking on your level. You are on the bottom most level of this uh, four-story uh, prison complex. You have heard prisoners coming in and out, uh, a couple people getting rowdy and someone getting slapped in the head with a uh, baton for his troubles. But uh, eventually you hear footstop, uh, footsteps coming towards you and you see... Um, a uh, small procession of guards and a uh, man who definitely looks like he's out of place uh, by dint that he's almost a foot shorter than them. Uh, and you see a, a rather stocky looking dwarf. Uh, he's wearing a flight suit uh, with some types of armor reinforcement on it. Uh, it looks like it's some type of mining gear that can double his armor in a pinch. Uh, and he's got a rather gruff look on his face. His arms are crossed and uh, one of the uh, security guards uh, looks down and says, are these the ones? He says, Hey, that's them. All right, your bail's here. Lucky your day. You're being, you're not free to go just yet. Your benefactor here wants to talk to you. And uh, they let you out. Uh, all the guards, uh, they have taken their, um, uh, basically their persuaders out, or their uh, uh, compliance rays out, but they're just holding them to their side. They're not using them in case you guys try to do something stupid. But, Does somebody uh, recognize the guy or know where he's from? Uh, go ahead and make a, another culture check. I know that's kind of what I've been asking you to do, but this is kind of what you're good at, Sammy. Ooh, there you go. You actually, um, I didn't put it on, Inesha. I will show. You don't know his name yet, but I, I will show you this. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what he looks like. Uh, okay. You do notice uh, very faintly on one of his shoulder pads, the opposite of the one that you see, you do see a very interesting... Um, icon it is of a planet uh that looks like it's been cracked uh and you know that this harkens back to a rather controversial mining method that was um 
abolished several hundred years ago. Um, when the expanse into the universe really got underway, people thought that resources were endless and that they could just pretty much do whatever they wanted. The Dwarven Mining Guilds went nuts, of course, and they made massive Planet Cracker class ships. Super capital vessels that can quite literally crack off pieces of a planet, drag them in, and then just grind them down for their resources. This ended up being detrimental, as it was later found that even planets that didn't have any possibility to host life, just simply destroying planets has unfortunate consequences on the solar system as a whole. And mm. this led to... Who would have um, thunk? Who would have thunk? Um, but uh, this led to a rather massive impasse between the Pact Worlds and the, uh, the Dwarven Mining Guilds, who at the time, and to this day, still hold significant power uh, due to the wealth and uh, mining potential that they have. Um, and it pretty much, the Dwarves put their stubby feet down and refused to uh, abide by what the Pact Worlds wanted because they weren't mining in Pact World space, so they had no say over it. Um, now, this was a, a, tact, uh, a gambit that they played, uh, that the Vescarium, who was not part of the Pack Worlds and still technically isn't part of the Pack Worlds, so kind of like Russia's like, yes, we are part, but we are not, you know, kind of shit. Um, the Vescarium was there with representatives, but they were fairly certain the Vescarium was going to do like they always do and just take a neutral stance and not get involved. So as long as it wasn't uh, in Vesk space, and no dwarf is dumb enough to mine in Vesk space without their uh, express permission. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there was a rather shocking turn of events when the Vescarium actually sided with and joined forces with the Pact Worlds. The Dwarves had enough of a military infrastructure that they could have uh, at very least bloodied and forced a, uh, a ceasefire with the Pact Worlds. But with the Vescarium and their significant military piling in, it became a very uh, clear that while they could inflict losses, they wouldn't survive themselves and it would... Uh, be a, a long-winded, humiliating defeat. So the uh, dwarves uh, very reluctantly agreed to the terms, and uh, the abolishment of planet cracking in earnest was, uh, well, abolished. The old uh, super capital planet crackers, where most of them were taken in and pretty much scrapped, um, a few of them were actually left in the areas where they, uh, where they cracked the planet and basically are now pseudo stations that its job is to try to unfuck the system over over you know a century or so with people mm -hmm. living there around the clock to basically make up for what was happening some of the smaller ones were actually reconfigured to basically be asteroid um wranglers they just do the same thing where they just drag an asteroid in and just crush that in and generally speaking they can get away with that but yeah. the fact that he's got that on his arm and this armor like all dwarven armors passed down means that he is someone from that era he was from the planet cracking and he looks like a fairly old dwarf too dwarves okay. live to about be about 350 years so, so sorry she's about just all gonna the... raise her eyebrow and then keep you know walk towards him yeah. keep her hands behind her back just to keep up the pretense that she's so tough like she's not you know you know i'm completely happy with this course of events <laughs> having yep. a large scaly hand pat me down that was lovely <laughs> mm -hmm. she was a woman though you're fairly certain um <laughs> But the reason I gave you all that backstory is because you literally got a nat 20, so. Yeah, no worries. And, I but, and a that, lot of it down. Yeah, and a lot of that is kind of weird. You don't see the uh, mining guilds, well, they don't really work as a, a single contiguous guild. They broke up into many smaller organizations because without the lucrative contracts of all the planet cracking, they needed to diversify their income pretty much. So okay. you end, end up taking... Uh, back to a, a cell on a cell a it's like a cell except it doesn't have a, a door on it and you're taken way back and they uh, step outside and a, a force field comes up and this is actually a, a privacy screen uh, it basically blocks all forms of communication um, outside of that including telepathic you cannot communicate with anyone outside of this box now in any way shape or form and the dwarf apparently doesn't uh, quite trust this and you see him uh tapping around on a data pad he appears to be a mechanic of some sort uh and he does a scan of the room uh, he actually uh throws out a small baseball sized drone that uh, scans the room really quickly uh the force field by the way has become opaque so no one can see inside and uh, he kind of taps on his thing mm -hmm. yeah, good enough and uh, he goes all right you don't know who i am and i don't really care who you are let's just make this simple I got the benefactor that's been working for me, and he's been interested in you. 
And well, you're getting sprung and putting under my care. You're, uh, well, you're on a leave of absence, and we're gonna be leaving the planet. As soon as that's after, we're gonna go savaging, and you're gonna be my team. And well, until then, uh, until our benefactor decides to contact us again, that's how it's gonna be. Any questions? We're gonna crack some planets, sugar. You see his brow furl, um, and then he looks down at his arm, realizing that you've you've actually realized what that is. Most people don't. Uh, no. Mikin left that behind a long time ago, and I'd appreciate it if he didn't bring it up. Bit of a sour spot in my family line. Understood. And name's do we get some kind of contract, or are we are we being paid? Just uh, making sure to know my details. Yeah, it looks like he says, you're effectively on bail from this point on. Our benefactors paid out just pretty significant bail from whatever you did. Don't really know, don't really care. All I was told was to get you the hell off this planet until things calm down. So, you're going to be my crew. Was, well, uh, yeah, it's complicated. Don't want to talk about it here. Not that I don't trust the privacy screen, but, well, I don't trust it. So, that's fair. Fr- and uh, as far as monetary compensation, yeah, see what I can do. You'll have a little bit of spending money if you need to pick up anything, but don't try to run because if they catch you again, you're not going to be so fortunate the next time around. They'll keep you in the cell. This is a very special occasion. Our contact works some serious uh, leverage in order to get you out. Unfortunately, as much as it pains me, I don't even know who he is, but he's wor- I've worked for him for a few years now, and he's been good to me, despite all the mysterious mumbo-jumbo. There's, there's another m- contact we'll be meeting. But, uh, well, let's get out of here for now. He goes over to the uh, door, and he boom, boom, boom on it, and uh, the screen lowers, and he goes, Before, right, she, before the screen lowers, Emmy's going to look at him and telepathically ask, uh, so does your contract look like this? And then describe the guy she saw last in her solo. Ah. Uh, oh, rats. Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, p- pass that one by me again real quick. And uh, I'm assuming you, you give more details about his look. Yeah. I uh, that scummy little shite. He got you in this. I'm gonna fucking stream my life if I ever see him again. Are we hearing this? Yeah. Uh, he is speaking telepathically, but it depends if, if Sammy has opened it up so everyone can hear it. No, this is just Didn't between them. So. Yeah, if I find that little rat bastard, I'm gonna skin him alive and order him as a chuck strap. She's gonna smile and say he's dead. If she's yeah. he's literally talking about the the rat, then yeah, the, the I mean so Sammy meant more the influential guy because that <laughs> was technically who she saw last. But you know, the rat's dead. Uh, well. Isn't that a shame? You better stay that way, too. Uh, all right, let's get out of here. We're going to my ship. And after that, we'll sort everything out. And, and so, our gear? Uh, it'll be returned to you on the way. Just don't go make it a firefight, all right? And you do see that he actually has a uh, a revolver, a really big revolver on his uh, hip. So he is definitely not unarmed himself. Yep. Yeah. Okay. He's just going to uh, follow. Oh, before we go, my name's Baron of Sunderstone. But, uh, it's Captain Sunderstone to you now. Yes, sir? Who, who do I have the mixed honor of working with now? Do spell that for me, Jake, so that I can put it in my notes. <laughs> uh, you point. can actually see his sheet in NPCs. Okay. I had to give him a dwarven name, I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> my name is Magnus Lutrini. I do consulting and counseling. Pleased to meet you. Hi, likewise. Excuse oh. the suit, please. I'm still dirty. You kind of you kind of look at him and you realize he's a miner, so even though he's clean, his his uh, his outfit is always, you know, rugged, well-worn, especially his armor that's probably been passed down through his family line. You know, he doesn't give us the faintest of shits. It's like I am a miner, not a dancer. I don't give a shit if you're dirty or not. I guess he looks to the rest of you to give your names. The name's Sammy. 
Nothing else, just Sammy. He nods. Bye. Good enough for me. And what My about you? Scala. Ah, Scala. Mm-hmm. Green, you're breaking up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Slow motion. <God. laughs> what the hell is going on? Is today? he doing that or is the thing doing that? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Green, disconnect and reconnect. You, you're, you're, you're sounding like a robot. What the hell is going on today? It's the techno goblins, I'm telling you. It's something in the system. It's the techno it's goblins. It's the glitch goblin, yeah. It's the glitch I'm goblin. Not, I'm not at home, so my signal's gone to be Jake, bad. Okay. Jake, I blame you for the techno goblin. <laughs> you anyway. motherfucker. Yeah. I should have strangled him harder. <laughs> oh, you don't. You pretty well. Actually, you really wouldn't know. You don't. You don't know as much as Sammy. Yeah, does I wouldn't know <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You would have just. You would have strangled until he literally exploded into pixels. But then he would have just reformed at the nearest. Uh, you're kind of like a lich. Uh, the only way to kill a glitch goblin is to basically kill them in the system, and they're notoriously difficult to do that. Tim. Notoriously difficult. Um. Is actually. Um. Can you hear me now? More yeah. or less. Uh, also, Sammy, I would tell you that that's definitely not the glitch goblin that you used in your little backstory area. It was a different color and had, had that different one. features. Yeah. Yeah. It was a di- it was a completely different color. That one was bluish. I, I figured as much. Otherwise, you would have recognized it sooner. I think. And tried to strangle it as well. <laughs> no, no, it's it's not as bad. I definitely. Would have she had multiple it. experiences with the thing, so. Well, so far, it's been helpful to you. Yeah. So, uh, he, so tax, it goes, mm-hmm. I've dealt with Sharon before. Hey, what about you? It's quite the shunt on the back. I'm not Nova. Ah, nice and simple. Good choice of names, too. And then he looks to, uh, what about you, uh, Mr. Mysterious? Don't worry, we'll get your helmet back so you can go back to being all dark and dirty. Well, uh, since he's off his helmet, uh, you do see that he has blonde hair. Um, very common face. Uh, there's a large scar on Adnan's, um, on his, um, above it, on his, well, where his eye would be. Uh, and his eye is also there. Uh, just, you know, a large scar all around his eye. And, um, his eyes look kind of a little bit like cameras, and instead of retina, it's kind of like a holographic projection of a retina with various numbers going around it. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He kind of pauses for a moment. My name is... And I subconsciously I start running my subroutine searching for a name. And you get nothing but error not found, sector corrupted, uh, registering unknown. But then eventually, uh, you see, you see uh, that the, the, the AD9S uh, come back as the only thing that you can process as being identifiable to you. AD9S. AD9S. Aye, all right. AD9S works. You always got coy names, don't you? Yeah, you look like you got shot in the head. I got better. <laughs> uh, he he kind of he kind of steps forward, kind of gives you a clap on the shoulder. <laughs> That's the way to think about it, the dwarven way. And I think this there, and of course, I'm assuming that Doctor Herman would introduce himself because Scoggs never came back for some strange reason. Yeah, well, shit happens, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to go on without him, but uh, you know, we still have a full party, so I'm gonna truck on along. Oh, and the doc says, all right, don't worry, you'll get your tin can back, doc, don't worry. Hopefully it won't be in pieces. And he uh, then shows you out, and then uh, he got to go dum dum, and that's enough to get the guard's attention. He goes, all right, we're done here. Paperwork should be filed by now. We're leaving. And uh, one of the guards uh, touches onto his PDA, you know, the holographic thing goes over his eye. He goes, yep, you're clear, free to go. You get your weapons at the door. And uh, you're, you are escorted out, and uh, you are basically put into a sally port room. Basically a room that uh, it leads only out, and your weapons have been um, arrayed, and then the door is pretty much sealed behind you, so you can't get back in. 
and then the door out is open for whenever you want to go out and all your weapons are arrayed um you don't have anything that was found to be property of uh, uh the corporation that was not taken so you basically have what you had before on your official official character sheets okay so we, we couldn't keep the pistols and the shock batons no you could not and they were just standard batons they were not shock batons <laughs> ah, okay sorry or also known as shock truncheons because you know we have to call it something devastating. So I mean, she's gonna throw her backpack on her on her back, clearly, <laughs> and then uh, walk towards the door and giving a wink towards the guards and be like, "It was fun." <laughs> oh, there's uh, Scoggs. Have you fixed your uh, uh, your issues? Oh my god, it, I can hear him, but it's, yeah, it's good now. It's the adapter that is wrong. I should get to turn him up now. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same here. I'm sorry, it's like uh, the adapter to the, to the microphone and the headset is glitched, and I found some uh, very old one to exchange. Uh, it's, the quality it's is good, but the yeah, volume the is very is low. Yeah, if you have 160, you're still extremely low for me, but I can hear you, so... But the quality is good. It's yep. not raping my ears anymore. Yes. Okay. So let me just catch you up real quick. Uh, you were uh, pretty much bailed out of whatever you did and taken to a privacy room by the dwarf whose entry you now see, uh, Battle for uh, Sunderstone. And he basically said he's working for a benefactor who is keenly interested in you, but he wants you to get off the planet for the time being. So you've been uh, roped on as uh, a group of salvagers working under uh, Captain Sunderstone with his ship uh, that you're on in the way of going to. And he basically says he's going to explain more later. Uh, he explained this all in a privacy room, uh, one that he scanned uh, just to know that the guards outside could not actually hear you. And you are now put into a sally port room, which is basically uh, one of several rooms that leads out. So basically, whenever they need to give back dangerous equipment to people, they throw them in one of these rooms, and it seals the door one way. They can still see you through uh, some uh, reinforced windows, but uh, the only way is to basically go out onto the street with, you know, your your firepower. So that's pretty much where you are right now, and uh, Sunderstone is in the room waiting for you. I'm going to stick my pistol back with a sunshine. <laughs> And no one's going to ask how it just vanishes up your butt, but, you know. <laughs> no, it's more like I slide it into my phone, pretty much. Right, fur. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, go, we'll go with that. <laughs> but uh, eventually, he's like, all right, you got your gear. Yeah, you're probably going to need it. Let's go. Was we allowed to keep the, the thing we looted? No, those were taken from you because they were technically uh, by a court property. So he uh, takes you and you uh, catch a uh, public transport uh, to a, um, basically the, the equivalent of a uh, bus. And uh, he pays fares. Uh, he actually seems to have a, uh, a pass that pretty much lets all of you ride free. Uh, probably because you're his, technically his workers now. Uh, and you kind of rather long ride uh, all the way through uh, on the bus. And I need everyone to make a perception check again. Coming up. All right. This one's a little bit easier than the one before. So let me see. It feels uh, so good to be a Dex and a, and a perception character. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can't have the visor go down when the visor is see-through, right? <laughs> so uh, right, uh, everyone who got a 15 or above, which would pretty much be everyone but uh, Magnus and uh, the doctor, uh, as you're kind of looking overhead, this, uh, this, basically flying train, bus, whatever, it has uh, holographic displays that are hanging down, showing various ads and various stops. All of you, at some indiscriminate point, uh, you see a small yellow head briefly appear on the screen and, you know, stick its tongue out or otherwise mess with the font, you know, changes the font of several uh, displays and, you know, jumbles up the letters. And then, yeah, you definitely see that the goblin is still following you. Yeah, Sammy's going to keep a close eye on that bugger. He does kind of like blow you a kiss with like a little emoji heart. <laughs> he makes a small, um, yeah, I don't think you know that. The Korean way to make a heart, which is like putting your thumb and index finger together to make a heart. 
which is a lot less obvious than doing it with your fingers. You know, the normal. Oh. Thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see the uh, I can see the metaphor. Very interesting. You can get why it's more more her than doing the oh, love you kind of deal. Yeah. He tries to <laughs> he tries to do it back, but he just fumbled with his little fingers and then he goes, nah, and then he just vanishes, goes to mess with other people. He yep. has yet to he has yet to jump to any devices. He's pretty sure that he can't actually jump to wireless devices. So you guys are all fine for the moment. Either that or he has that. no he has uh, no interest in jumping to your device at the moment. So. Does Sammy know if she can tel telepathy with this thing or not? Um, it's just mechanical. You could, uh, assuming that the device that he's currently inhabiting has a, uh, a basically a psychoreactive crystal in it. And most phones and any kind of device that you could speak into have these. It's basically to allow Sheeran and um, uh, contemplatives and other psychic-only uh, speakers to basically speak uh, with commonly held devices. But uh, you don't see any of the devices that he's currently in having these. They're just monitors. Mm. I mean, she'd still try. <laughs> yeah. See if she can get through to him. Yeah, he's he is keenly interested in you. You would notice, but uh, yeah. as yet to actually, uh, you know, make anything. This you're not even. He's interacting, but you're not 100 percent sure he can speak exactly. That's something you don't know terribly much about. I mean, she would just say, if she could reach him, be like, Hey there, you like chaos, right? Go back into that prison and call some. <laughs> that sounds fun, right? He goes, ooh! <laughs> and then he vanishes for about five minutes. And when he comes <laughs> back, he, uh, he uh, changes the display that you're looking at to be a camera feed of the... Uh, of the prison, uh, and you see that all the doors, um, despite the fact that the doors are mechanical, apparently the motors going to them are not, and they're just opening and closing randomly. Uh, the drones are running around and colliding into each other, just randomly zapping stuff, and the guards are pretty much <laughs> frantically trying to just grab drones and turn them off, and then uh, the, the feed immediately cuts after a drone literally slams into the camera, and you see the little goblin come back on. <laughs> nice. She's gonna make the hearts and more again and be like, nice. You know the word. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That was too tough. I think she's going to say, well, I'd love to meet your contractor at some point. <laughs> oh, he gives you a thumbs up and then he vanishes. And it's at this point you arrive at your stop. Um, the dwarf <laughs> is either he knows about the goblin and doesn't care or he hasn't noticed. He says, all right, here's our stop We're at the spaceport. Would I have enough? time to uh, use my computer and send some text messages during the uh, night. Yes, yes, you could have. Right, I have about 10 minutes to do things. If you wish, just tell me what you're doing. Right, I would like to send a message to the, the um, person I spoke with that warned me before the trapdoor, my associate. Right. Yes, that I actually have the... Uh... Hold on a second had it and where did i put it okay there it is so um the this is the name of the corporation that you're working for i'm going to whisper it to you it's up to you if you wish to uh disseminate this information all right yeah so it's it's in um uh in roll 20 that is the name of the company that apparently got you know things happened okay interesting um, all right, text message only, and I write, I am alive, um, ML, all right. sent. All right, uh, you don't get anything back initially. In fact, you get a, uh, basically this, uh, this address does not, um, this address does not exist, but uh, make me a computer's check when you get that message. Okay. All right, that's enough. Um, you've worked in the business long enough. You know about, you know, things like that happening, about lines going dead, effectively, uh, usually meaning that the device has been shut off or destroyed. But the way that it, it, it returned to you, um, specifically the font used, um, basically meant that it was fake. Uh, mm -hmm. That number does, in fact, still work. Okay. So when you get off at uh, the stop and you get a better signal, because your signal was kind of kind of crappy, it has... These buses have Wi-Fi, but, you know, it's kind of like McDonald's Wi-Fi. It's it's Wi-Fi, but it's not Wi-Fi. 
um, you get a better signal and uh, you get a reply saying, um, uh, we'll be in contact. Uh, and then you see uh, your wife's initials and then is safe. All right. That's all I needed. Okay. When I see Magnus uh, using that laptop, uh, I will uh, scoot over to him and say, Hey, when you're done with that, uh, can I quickly borrow it to send a message as well? I need to me? contact a friend. Yes, I'm asking. Uh, sure. Um, is there some kind of guest mode or something I can put this on? Yeah, so you have you can for my stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, you have all your stuff secured. I'm assuming or secured or not. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, sure. Also, let okay. Yeah, so basically, you can now access the. Assuming actually, do you have a personal comm unit, um, Chris? I do. Yeah. All right, we'll just say that yours is inoperable at the moment because of literally being frozen. Since I don't want to retcon that scene. So you're able to borrow the laptop. You are uh, as you're walking. You're uh, it's basically like an oversized PDA, uh, depending it's, on what it looks like ex exactly. It's actually size zero. Oh. So I'm assuming it has some kind of projector or something on it, or you know, um, either way. It has. I'm guessing uh, personal commune doesn't work for sending long range messages to a. a uh, it can. Uh, it just has to be attached yeah. to an info sphere, which you are in an info sphere right now. So as long as you're on the planet, uh, you can connect with other people. Yeah, let's say my thing is still fried. Still. Uh, yeah, it just has to. I I have a personal commune if you want to use that one. Uh, works well. Okay. I just need to send a message to an old friend. I guess she's old now. All right. And so, uh, I sent a message to Mira. All right. You, uh... I finally no, so woke up. And I really would like to meet up with you and catch up. Hopefully I am able to reach you fast enough. Because it seems we are leaving the planet soon. Right. The message is sent. Uh, you don't get a uh, response like Magnus did about the, the line being dead, so you assume that the message has been received. She just simply has not replied yet. Uh, when I get it back, I would send a message again. Need, right. need info on Belfogas and Stone. All right. Uh, you get a uh, reply about a minute later uh, saying, I've gone to ground. Uh, information will be sparse. Stand by uh, for for the moment. All right. You assume that uh, they're also probably not welcome anymore, given that you literally heard gunshots in the background. Yeah, they had some problems, I assume. Violent liquidation, let's put it that way. But, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you guys don't know that. Only Magnus does. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as you're kind of being led through a, uh, what effectively is an orbital promenade, um, it's basically when ships come in and out, there's several uh, starports in the sea. This is one of the larger ones. You all know that much. Um, there's also all kinds of booths, concessions, basically like a gigantic mall attached to this place so people can get spacers that are just looking for, you know, whatever fix they're looking for. And you also see uh, a few alleyways that definitely go down into what can only be referred to as a red light district where other needs can be satisfied, but obviously you're being taken uh, directly to uh, the port. And when you get into the gigantic port building, this very round building that can house pretty much anything short of a super capital, uh, which are usually not, don't come into the atmosphere unless they're crash landing, which tends to be pretty bad for whatever they land on. Uh, but they're pretty much everything up into, up into including a few um, uh, capital ships. You see at least at one Vesk battleship, just difficult to miss the behemoth um but it uh, looks like it's just in the process of landing at the moment so you're basically taken into this area and it says uh, you'll have time to shop for now i want to get you get you into the ship so you know where it is and uh he uh basically you stand on a large uh platform that then eventually whisks you all away at high speeds and you see all kinds of ships of all various sizes passing as they're sitting in the hangars. You see people, but they're just blurs going by. The only people you really notice are like colorful Vesk and, you know, uh, 
Sheerans who stand out briefly, but they're gone just as much. And there is a field up, so you're not, like, windblown or anything. But eventually you come to a stop, and he, uh, he says, All right, my ship's over this way. And uh, you see the dwarf kind of slowly walking. He stops about halfway to, like, fix a crick in his back. Ah, it's getting too old for this. And, uh, which must mean he's old for a dwarf. Um, and you see he takes you to a ship that looks a little bit something like this. I just showed you the ship. Mm -hmm. Do I recognize these? Oh, damn. It's not as amazing as I thought. Uh, everyone can make a culture check about the ship. Uh, Sammy, you're going to get a bonus on this, given you already know uh, its association with planet cracking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do actually know what the ship is. Uh, all right. of you. Uh, so I'll tell you what everyone knows, and I'll move on to what Sammy knows specifically. Uh, this is definitely a uh, dwarven-made ship. You can tell by the way it's very, uh, very robust and very well built. Um, even looking down at it, you can see that there's lots of redundancy and not a lot of frilliness to it. It's it's meant to do its job and do it well and take an absolute beating in the process. Um, it looks like it's a prospector uh, type ship. And then Sammy, in addition, you know that this is. Uh, there's a little bit of information you may have heard from a dwarven contact or someone who knows about dwarves. This is um, uh, an Azul class uh, prospector. Uh, it was a ship that uh, its original purpose was it was kept on the super capital planet crackers. And basically after the, the planet uh, piece of the planet was cracked and, and lifted up by a tractor beam, it was uh, then flew through to see if there's anything interesting. Um, mm -hmm. They would send smaller drones into the bigger areas, but uh, this basic thing just carried the drones there, um, disseminated the drones, the drones would come back, and then this would fly back to the main ship. So that information could be processed. And you do know this, that notice that it does have some uh, the Planet Cracker symbol still on it. Uh, the paint is has seen better days, but it looks like it's been kept up with. Maybe a mark of pride, maybe a mark of shame. You know, dwarves are very much about wearing their uh their failings and successes openly as they feel that uh to try to hide them is dishonorable mm -hmm. and uh, the marking at the back is probably uh the emblem of his clan or the guild he's part of as dwarves uh, even in space still associate with clans and guilds and uh, you also see um from your specific vantage point uh you see its name it is the orm anvil of mar and uh okay. actually Actually, with your, what did you get again? 23? Uh, that's enough. You know that all RM stands for Outer Rim's Mining Coalition. They're a, one of the larger Dwarven mining guilds that split up after the uh, the planet cracking was banned. Mm -hmm. So he definitely has some clout. Yep. And he uh, takes you down to the ship. Uh, and you actually have to go down a lift. You're actually looking at it from slightly above. You're about uh, two stories above the ship. And this is a fairly large ship, is a heavy freighter. Uh, it is, uh, for ship size categories, it's a large size ship. So, a uh, pretty big ship. So, you eventually uh, make your way down, and he leads you over to the uh, boarding ramp on the front, uh, which is currently up, but you see that there is an individual uh, cloaked sitting on some crates nearby, and he's currently working a laptop. He, uh, he kind of looks up to you and you see a rather uh, a devious smile. You've seen that kind of smile before, uh, Sammy. It looks like the same one the, gro the goblin wears. <laughs> Great. So he's going to telepathically link to that guy and be like, So do you own our little yellow friend then? Uh, owns a bit of a strong word, sweetie. Let's just say we have a working relationship with each other. He does like causing chaos. <laughs> yeah, saw what you did with the prison. Nice job. Uh, those leathernecks deserved it. <laughs> Indeed. And, uh, and then she's going to keep walking. <laughs> so you kind of walk up and he uh, looks to you and says, All right, Jazz, these are the ones. And he goes, <laughs> Yeah, they're the ones, all right. Good to see y'all. See, my friend was able to spring you out from your little bit of uh, problems. You're lucky our benefactor's working for you, huh? Well, it's a step up. 
Hey, the only step farther down for you guys is in the ground, if you know what I mean. <laughs> too tall. Mm. So, let me give you the skinny and what I know. That, uh, well, ain't gonna get you shot, but let's go on a ship for that. Let this old dwarven girl's thick hide keep uh, prying eyes away, you know what I mean? And he, you see the dwarf kind of looks angry and he says, uh, you keep that little goblin out of my tender and I'm going to break your head in half with a wrench. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Zippy's nice. That's what you shit. Mostly. And you see the dwarf kind of just, yeah, no, no, he ain't gonna, okay? Jeez, get off my back, old man. Ugh. And you see he he mutters something angrily in dwarven. Uh, if, uh, it, do any of you speak dwarven? Nope. Nope. Okay. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with rubber tubing in certain parts of that punk's mother. <laughs> hmm. So, uh, you know, in the typical uh, dwarven fashion of uh, obscene insults. So he takes you on board the ship, it closes up behind you. Everything within is very industrial. Uh, there's very minimal. Uh, it, it's not to say that it's rough shot, but it's built uh, to purpose. And everything looks very redundant. And you also notice the internal layout as he takes you uh, up to the, uh, to the crew area is very chaotic at the same time you can uh add knives especially you can see plenty of uh very defensible locations um someone boarding the ship would be in for a rough fight and uh, actually make me a culture check specifically at nines being you were or are a mercenary type fellow yeah you know that dwarven ships are built in such a way as they are a pain in the ass to board um to the point where some of the larger ships um it, it will take at least a company of men uh, to be able to take it. They have all kinds of redundancies built in. Um, the layout of, sh of two ships of the identical make, you know, will not have the same rooms in the same place. So even if you know the layout of one, you know, Kestrel class and you go to another, you will end up walking into a completely different room thinking it's it was like something It's like a labyrinth more. built out. Yeah, basically the same rooms are always there. They're just in different places. Mm -hmm. So it probably way. also has this large central corridor uh, with the, like, uh, you know, um, like Warhammer ships. Yeah, where it's just basically a gigantic kill zone. And there's also lots of four-way intersections that have a pop-up, mm -hmm. um, well, turrets, and they also have uh, fortifications that are built into the walls that just basically spring out. Basically, y you can take a, a dwarf ship by force, but it's not going to be fun. Uh, granted, industrial ships like this, less so. But it's still very defensible. So In essence, safe. you would need like seven. Uh, you would need like seven hundred Wesk to take it. <laughs> yeah, something like that. You would definitely need guys that are specialized in the task and have power armor. But even then, they're going to get the shit shot out of them because dwarves don't just you know stand down. So basically, you're not, you're not uh, um, boarding a ship, just sieging a ship. Yeah, so, pretty much. So he takes you into uh, one of the back rooms and uh, closes the door and says, All right, so you're a lot of you got into some problems. That's putting it light, don't you think, old man? Uh, what, you want to go through this then? I already know the deal. All right, so our mysterious benefactor, for what reasons known to him and only him, sees interest in you guys. You, you're here, you're not there, so. Uh, the thing is, Viacorp's going to be looking for you for a while. I'm trying to do what I can to get him off your tail, but it's going to take time. They're a big corporation, and as such, they don't know those little guys when they go scurrying about. You know what I mean? So it's like a, a truck stepping on a Yosoki. Doesn't really notice till after the fact. So we're going to get you off planet before that after effect becomes fact. You get it? I have a question. Do they want the information I downloaded from the mainframe when I was just It says, oh, you got some information on Viacorp Sensor. Yeah, hand it over, old man. Yeah, nice work. So, assuming you uh, hand over the information, you would see the file literally being grabbed by the little uh, yellow guy, and he goes, yoink! And then he zips away with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, yeah, I see that, Zippy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're still using those? Oh, I'm going to exploit that. All right, thanks. I owe you one. If you ever need a favor from Jack Jazz, you let me know. I'll hook you up. 
uh, he goes, so, needless to say, you guys are getting off planet. Uh, apparently the old man here says, I, I am an old man, but that doesn't mean I take, a, no, take no offense to it. Watch your tongue, boy, before I tear it out. Oh, whoa, whoa, calm down. Uh, before Captain Sunderstone here, he's going to take you out on a salvaging mission for about a week or so. After which, you should be clear to come back, and then maybe our benefactor will speak to you in person. This person as he does. Hell, I don't even know who I'm in, and I know everything. Know what I mean? So, you probably got questions. I might have answers. Hit me. I mean, not physically, but you know. Uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> so, who's our benefactor? Yeah. Don't really know. Uh, he only goes by a pseudonym, VV. Don't know what that means. Don't really care. He speaks through some two-way hologram that makes it really hard to see his features. All I know is he's an older man, and, well, he seems to know his shit. He ain't talking out of his ass. And trust me, I deal with a lot of ass talkers. So does he look like this? And then, again, she's gonna telepathically describe the guy who was like, you're very valuable, and you're, you're in good hands, and stuff like that. Mm. What were the initials? Can you repeat them? They were VV. V, okay. Yeah, that, uh, that's the only thing you know about him, or his initials. Does he like to make robots? No idea, but he sure talks to enough of them. You might have to, you gotta share the specs on your bot there, looking pretty good. Nah, anyway, I'm getting off track. We'll do that later. You guys got some time before you have to pour it out, so. Probably have some time to do a little bit of shopping. Uh, Spoon here, uh, you know, tight wad here. Uh, Sunderstone here will give you a little bit of spending money. Aye, aye, I'll give you a bit. But, uh, my coffers ain't exactly that deep. There's a reason I need you. Uh, do we need um, to buy our uh, scavenging equipment, or what do we have to do? I got most of the equipment you're going to need, at least the cheap stuff. I'll give you all a set of mag boots, and, uh, well, they're universal. They'll attach to your feet easy enough. Keep it from drifting off to low gravity. And your suit's got uh, environmentals, so I'll give you a few spare canisters if I can find them. And, well, depending on what we're going to be going doing, fortunately, I don't know all the details. Uh, basically, a uh, ship, a large signature has come out of the warp. Uh, something that uh, got dragged in in the warp rift and, well, got shot back out. Good salvage, just have to go get it. That's what it is, I don't know. Basically, what we're going to be doing is prospecting. Basically means we go in and get the get the whatever it is back online and claim it as ours. And once that's done, I can send word to my, my guild mates, and they'll bring in the big ship to actually do the salvaging. We're just claim jumpers. Well, assuming we get there first. If not, it might get a little messy. Uh, that being said, you all could clearly see the ship is fairly well armed uh, for its size. Most of it is mining gear, but uh, there isn't that much of a difference between mining a planet and mining a ship, if you get catch my drift. Mm. Yeah, it's all good, old man, but we got the... Mm, yeah, yeah, Sunderstone. Uh, but I think our friends might have some more questions, eh? What about you guys? Anything? What are our uh, work when we not salvaging? I don't know, but the old man, uh, whoever the old man is, uh, no, not you, old man, the other old man, uh, he seems to see some value in you. So it's up to him to decide. I just work for him and, and cash the credits, you know what I mean? I don't really care who you are, just, you know, you're valuable. So he paid me to crack you guys up, so I did. Do you not even know what general business he is in? Yeah, he gives me all kinds of jobs, truth be told. I hack everything, mess with this, mess with that, get this piece of information. Don't know why he wants it, don't really care. He pays good, pays on time. So did he give you this mission too? Yeah, that he did. Saw him on the hololith and everything. Like I said, roughly humanoid. Uh, but uh, back to you, Dollface. Uh, what he said, in maybe, but I don't know, something's off. Uh, it seems similar, but, you know, a lot of people got chiseled features like that. Hmm. Fair enough. 
But uh, one thing I will say is uh, I wasn't responsible for getting you out. Uh, he points to uh, uh, do, 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 do Nova. He points to you and says, I don't know why it, uh, whatever you were doing uh, just kind of opened up before I even got, even before Zippy he even got to your cryopod. If I would wager a guess, uh, I'd wager that someone else let you loose. Something to think about, maybe. Hmm. How soon? Are we supposed to leave? Because I would like to make contact with an old friend, if possible. Yeah, hold on one sec. He kind of uh, uh, flicks his hand out, and as you see in the picture that I put in Starfinder on uh, Discord, uh, that's what he looks like, by the way. Uh, you see this holographic display kind of comes up, and he begins working things. Let's see, character three. Yeah. You'll be safe for uh, three hours, maybe, but uh, anything more than that's pushing it. Uh, I've distracted them and sent them other places looking for you, but uh, they're going to find that ruse pretty quick. Hmm, since you are well connected, uh, could you run a search on an individual for me? I don't yeah, really sure, why not? The old man's credits are still paying for this anyway. Who are you looking for? Mira17759. Yeah, yeah. Contemplative, right? I recognize those names. Yeah, Correct, sure. Yeah. Let me take a look. See, uh, she has some explaining to do. Oh, yeah, I imagine she does. Why well, is she the one who froze you in the first place? Sounds like something that those brain heads would do. Well, pretty much. Oh man, you're shit out of luck, then, ain't you? Well, according to what I find, she worked for Viacorp for about 45 years from the time that you got frozen, and she got booted out about five years ago. Uh, some kind of dis disciplinary action or some shit. That's a corporate way of saying they didn't like a tune, so they fired her. And as to where she is now, we yeah. take a look. The console inside said three years ago. Interesting. You were frozen? Didn't I say that? You told Might have me. slipped. <laughs> He's gonna smile. Well, I mean, I don't think so yet. I mean, we had some time to talk in the prison, but that wasn't a very nice uh, environment, I think. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I, well, yes, I apparently missed 50 years. So I'm still catching up on what the hell is happening here. And, uh, well, as I said, I've missed 50 years, so I need to catch up on what happened in these years as well, because stuff has changed, apparently. Why yeah. were you frozen? Uh, there was an accident. Wow. And? Now, are we, are, we, are we talking accident or accident? He uses quotation marks. Well, let's say... It was an experiment that kind of backfired. Oh, shit. Well, you're out now, at least. Most people who get frozen like that don't ever come back. Assuming you're still dealing with some brain freeze, huh? Not really joggling too much about your past? A little bit oh, iffy? Yeah. It's not nice. Yeah, well, just don't try to force it too much. And let it come back if it's coming back. Just telling you now, some people who get frozen don't remember nothing. I mean, you seem to remember plenty, so you got that going for you. If uh, you... Yeah, Tax, we're going to end soon. If you want to talk about it sometime, I have a little bit of experience. Let's see, where, where, where is it? And I, I rummage through my backpack, and I give you my second card. Yeah. Which... Uh... Is plain white with Magnus Lutrini written in, on it on a, in a nice cursive but simple font. And it says consulting, counseling, and there's a little picture of a water lily on it, stylized. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you shrink, huh? <laughs> Man, I know a lot of people really need you. Aspiring. I'm sure you have the answers that I'm looking for, but hey, I mean, I'll just save this for later. Who knows? Well, the answers are all inside you. The question is just how to approach them. 
Well, I'm not really looking for internal answers at the moment. Hmm. I've got some catching up to do. Well, it's up to you. Good luck. Of course. So, looking up a few things here. Uh, you would know anything about the... Uh... One second, real quick. Okay. Uh, let's see, I had it open and then I closed it. Uh, do you, any of you other guys have questions while I'm looking something up? And nope. we're not going to be doing anything important tonight, Marine, so if you can bail whenever you feel like it. I didn't realize we were just going <clears> to <throat> give a smile, give a wave, and then go outside and sit at the boxes and check her PDA and see if, first off, everything, if, if anyone has contacted her or tried contacting her, and then second off, if her bank account has been... Add it to, shall we say? Uh, no, your bank account uh, currently has not been added to. Uh, it looks like uh, the uh, sum that was going to be sent to you bounced. Lovely. Uh, so. And did everyone tr anyone try and contact her? Either to give her a job or to figure out what the hell happened? Uh, no, you just got the normal, uh, spam, uh, mail from various people who were well below your, uh, bar, you know, people you used to work with, but your skill is now so good. They're not even worth, uh, the time of day. Yeah. So no one of importance has, uh, yet contacted you. Oh, I was thinking feed and enlargement pills or something. <laughs> um, I'm gonna head up. All right. Good night, man. Good night. Good night. We'll try to start a little bit earlier, maybe next time. No problem. Would be nice. Yeah, it would be good. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't mean to start that late. I, I thought you guys were cool with this time. It was actually a little bit later than I intended to start. So we'll start about maybe half hour, forty five minutes earlier. I mean, it's I'll Amit. Time. It's Amit's time. We only started like a like fifteen minutes late. Okay. So. Uh, We'll work with Armin just so that everyone can be here and we can have. Like I said, I don't want to run my yeah. sessions too long to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's only been two hours. So. Oh, cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah. okay, that was it. He goes. So, uh, does, the, does the word star stack mean anything to you there, Nova? Uh, star sec? Hmm. You know, something to do with lots of guns firing off, lots of people dying, high rise, that kind of thing. And that part you definitely remember. Hmm. I believe that it was a day before the accident. Maybe even less. Well, uh, well Why? I might have some way for you to go check out before you leave then. Assuming you can get a pass there. And he goes, uh, whoop! And he sends the hologram out and uh, displays a displays the building and it zooms in uh, to the top of the building and the top of the building no longer looks like a bar it actually looks like a park with a statue of some kind in the middle um, several statues in fact uh, and it goes yeah unfortunately the old star sec went to bunk not after the, long after the shooting although they didn't kill who they were looking to kill uh, they killed the company all the same it's a memorial park now and the the, the Area below is attendance for under underappreciated families or some shit. All I know is that uh, maybe you go here looking for your answers. Hmm. Interesting. Um. I'll ask Magnus. Uh, did we get any reply from Mira? I check it. Uh. You actually do get a reply. It's a, uh, it looks like a different number uh, that is basically it's the number that you sent to is telling you about a different number to contact. Uh, wait. So is that from? Can I tell if that's a reply for the stuff I sent or for the stuff? You sent? Uh, it's definitely was sent as it's uh, referring to Nova specifically. Okay, uh, I'll give it to him. Okay, um, I'll try my own comm right now to see if it works. Uh, it unfortunately does not. Uh, you do notice that Jazz sees this as, uh, you freeze your tech too, huh? 
Yeah, give it here. Should just be a battery issue. I'll hand it over. Yeah, very quickly with a uh, Omni tool that's actually built into his finger. His uh, hands are actually prosthetic despite looking human. And he pops it open and says, Ah, yeah, just a dud battery. Those old ones don't do so good with cryo freezing. <laughs> then again, nothing really does. He pops in a new one, slaps it, and then uh, turns it back on. Yeah, there we go. Tosses it back to you. Should work fine now. Thank you. And sure enough, it works well, perfectly fine. And, and you're able to put the number in. I'll put the number in. And uh, I'll just try a voice call. You immediately get a request for a video call, actually. And you can actually display a video call with your um, comm set. It just basically puts a holographic thing in front of you. One, One way, way, of course. Fancy. Okay, I'll just push the button and accept it. You hear a, a voice on the other end. It's a little static key at first. He goes, oh, oh, what, did I put this thing on wrong? No, no, this is the left. And, oh, why is it pink? Oh, and you realize it zoomed in way too far, and it zooms back out, and you do see the uh, the floating brain uh, person that is Mira. Oh, my goodness, it worked. Oh, Excelsior, it worked. Oh, Oh, I'm so good. To, so glad to see you, Nova. Oh, I have so much to tell you. And she immediately begins rattling off things faster than you can hear. A long time not seen. And you see a little bit of anger on his face. Oh. It's difficult to actually see her own facial expressions, given that she's literally a giant brain with a tiny body. But you do sense... Um, through it, but given that it, this your comedy does have a psycho sensitive crystal uh, and she is psychic, you can definitely sense um, sadness in her, well, her demeanor. I am so terribly sorry about what happened to you, Nova. I I should have known better than to use that crystal. It was way way beyond anyone. It's uh, we didn't know what it would do. I thought just a simple test would be enough. You could get it away if something happened, but. Unfortunately, it froze you solid. Every single molecule of your body, down to the very atoms, were frozen. It was all we could do just to keep you stable before, well, you would have destabilized at the molecular level and would have ceased to exist. And, well, I don't know what happened to your self, your soul, whatever they call it, but it seemed to have stuck around. I spent 46 years under Voss. He was gracious enough to allow me the time and effort to... Well, to try to put things back to right, and I was almost successful. It took 46 years of work, but I was able to undo the falling process that froze you in the first place. You made many great leaps in cryogenics. Uh, on top of it, I assure you the research did not go to waste. But, well, uh, there was a change of ownership. Let me guess. Voss died at some point. Yes, well, died is... One way of putting it, uh, most people believe he was assassinated, in fact, by his incumbent, the one who runs by a corp now. A bastard nephew of his. He still uses the boss name, but he isn't even a candle to that glorious man. What is his name, this nephew? Egran. Egran Voss. And, uh, in fact, here's what he looks like, just in case you ever run into him. You won't, but from what little Jazz has told me, you've had a rather befouling of, uh, Biocorp, haven't you? Seems not the only one who had a falling out, so to speak. I do hope you're well, all things told. And he does show a picture of Boss to you. Oh, okay. Or, uh, Egran, specifically. He does bear some resemblance to, uh, your old, well, your old friend, uh, Eon Voss, but it's very clear it's a, a familial reference, not much more. Okay. So, well, so... I left uh, the headquarters in a bit of a messy situation, and let's just say they are not as friendly as they were 50 years ago. Yes, I'm afraid when uh, Egren took over, he... Let's just say he cleaned shop, not always in the good way. 
A lot of the old people either left of their own volition, were forced out, or were dealt with. He's turned Vyar Corp into something, well, it has a different name under a lot of people. A lot of people call it Vile Corp, as if to say it is vile, wretched. And they are not far off, I'm afraid. They've become far more aggressive of a company and have been, uh, let's just say they've been going very close to corporate warfare for many years now. He took over about 20 years ago, but his tightening of the noose, so to speak, was very, very subtle. I didn't realize how bad it was until only about four years ago, when I was abruptly kicked out. Ten years before that, they forced me to stop directly working on your project. You were quite literally put in a closet, as I'm sure you awoke into. Yes, it was not the most comfortable room. But hey, I was frozen. Couldn't do any resist. Well, thankfully they allowed me to keep you plugged in, otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation. Then they, well, didn't have any use for my research skills anymore, and they canned me, as the common folks say. But before I left, I was able to program the last little bit of the dethawing process into you, into your cryosleeper, and it worked. I'm... Grateful that you're all right. I'm assuming you're suffering long-term effects of cryostasis, memory loss, and all that good things. Yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yes, I, I am missing large chunks of my memory, I believe. Well, then you're better than 86% of people that come out of cryostasis. That's wonderful to hear. It means that you're 99.5% chance of getting all your memories back. I guess I should like those ones. Uh, yep. How are you doing these days? You got a new job, or what keeps uh, you busy? Well, yes and no. I'm actually working for a new comp a company, one that unfortunately had a very recent fallout with uh, Biotech as well. Um, GN Etic Advanced Biotechs. You probably need to write that one down as well. Sure thing. Thank the gods for random name generators. <laughs> the GN Eric basically takes on what Viacorp used to do. They actually a splinter of them that formed their own corporation uh, not long after the, the incumbent boss took over. Well... Apparently, they were starting to get a little bit too good, and uh, Red Scar arranged an accident for their corporation. Violent terrorists that needed cleaning out, if you catch my drift. Yes, I know what you mean. Thankfully, most of us got out. We have a very interesting uh, candidate, in fact. Uh, the only research subject that we have currently still have with us, a... Uh, uh, a Pisseri, which is, for reference, Magnus's race. Interesting. I actually met one today. Oh, really? Oh, really? That can't be a coincidence. Let me, um, is his name um, Lutrini? Magnus Lutrini. Oh, God. Is it bad if I say yes? Um... Well, his wife is fine, uh, stable for the moment, as we're getting ourselves resituated. Re we lost a lot of our research, but we still have the ability to keep her stable. You, oh, you don't actually know. I, I assumed you were a friend. Oh, wait, you cry generally frozen for 50 years. Um, we oh, only goodness. hear Nova talking, right? Uh, Pretty much? Yeah, you, you would hear him uh, assuming. Actually, how are you choosing to have this conversation telepathically? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, she's a contemplative, which also uses telepathy, right? Yeah, and so via, the, yeah. via the crystals, you can basically right, cycle crystals, yeah. yes, That's so. the most logical way. There's no reason for me so to... So I only that. see your facial expressions, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of the conversation, I just turn around towards Mike Miss, and I just randomly say uh, out loud, Apparently your wife is okay, Magnus. They're keeping her, they are keeping her alive. 
and then I just rotate my uh, head back and continue the conversation with Mira. That's uh, Radif. <clears throat> <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, we're going through a transitionary process. I'm actually on contact through a shuttle that's just about to leave orbit. We're moving to a different planet nearby. Uh, well, uh, nearby is uh, several systems away. I'll contact you once we're based, but uh, please reassure Magnus that Lily is in as good of condition as she can be. And that she did not take any injuries during the extended firefight that uh, claimed Lily the lives alive. of most of our security staff. Lily, you said? Yes. Well, I have to go. We're almost out of communications range. Uh, I'll try to stay in contact if I can. Uh, please contact me by this number. My old number is um, inoperable at the moment. I will contact you again, and I will find a way to repay you for what you did. Because I do understand that it was an accident. And the fact that I'm still here, I do owe it to you. It was the least I could do. You took a very large risk for me. And you can see the call is starting to get staticky. Uh, we're just about to make our transition into warp space. I'll see you around. Farewell. And the I line goes out. Well, it zaps uh, out. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And you're able to do that uh, quite well, Herman. The uh, Anvil of Mar, and you do have access to its long-range antenna. It has a fairly comprehensive communication suite on it, so you're able to do that quite effortlessly. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sending messages to everybody that I'm not, do not exist anymore. Yeah, I'm dead. And of course, the people that you that know know what that means, and they don't contact you anymore. And uh, I'm assuming the robot is just standing around doing a robot. Uh, if you would allow, Jax would actually like to take a look at him because he's he finds his uh, construction to be pretty cool. No touchy. <laughs> okay, I ain't gonna touch you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Watch it with the world of that big guy. That's just taking a look. Now call him off, please. I'm just waiting some seconds and say, Bob, um, go run and run a diagnostic. Ah, oh, okay. Woo. Uh, yes, I thought I only had this problem with women. Say, when he says that, somebody's gonna walk up and be like, So, Jax, I was just checking this, and it seems like it's bounced. Do you have any any ways to figure out who sent it to begin with? Yeah, she I, I'd rather love to find him. Yeah, sh slap it here. I'll run it through see what I can find. She's gonna do that. Right. And do it so overtly as possible. What? Only 11 firewalls? Am I supposed to be scared of this? Okay. Pass this, pass this, pass this. Hey, get that one for me to be. <laughs> All right. Uh, not how I would have done it, but okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Turns out whoever was paying him was the same ones who locked you up. Goes right back to Voss's personal bank account. Well, one of them. Did they, did they freeze our account? No, they didn't freeze her account, but uh, he, she was given a uh, effectively an untraceable amount of money. It was so thoroughly laundered that only someone with uh, Jax's speciality... He seems to be damn good at this kind of work. That's probably why he was able to find it. <laughs> also why she even approached him to begin with. Yeah, looks like it was never intended to... Uh, well, basically, it was fake money. It looked real. Kind of... So, so, it looked real. Smelled real, whatever. Wasn't real. Bounced as soon as it got near the banks. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah. Tell you what, an honest man or woman can't even make a living, I swear. People either pull a gun on you or they pay you with fake money. Or they tase you. Oh, yeah. Been there, done that. <laughs> I lost my hands, actually. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Anyhow. She's gonna smile on Zippy and be like, thanks, Zippy. No problem, Mom. And he zips back <laughs> into his, uh, in the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, little guy's pretty useful, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, as long as I can keep him out of trouble. I have him running around certain places, just causing havoc all the time. Yeah, he's like a dog, you know? One of those athletic kind of dogs that uh, don't shut up unless it runs around for an hour chasing its tail. He's like that. 
I mean, so. I have enough contacts you can visit if you would like. Oh, oh please do. She's going to send them to the um, <laughs> rat people. Uh, to the, uh, or to who it's he was so associated key. with. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Go rampant, buddy. Woohoo! Yoink! And he yoinks the data and then promptly goes on noise. Oh boy, do you even understand what kind of box you just opened up on them? Uh, what am I saying? Of course you do. She's just gonna grin and knowing smile and then look at the rest of the party. I'm not just gonna frown. <laughs> <laughs> But that guy here, yeah. Radix, yeah, he got blapped not long ago. What, you have a dealing with him? Pretty much. Yeah. Let's just yeah. say his, uh, he finally got his cue. <laughs> yeah, he tried evidently. to zap, uh, valuable materials, apparently. And she's gonna motion to her curves, and then, and that got him killed. Oh, well. He picked the wrong prey, I'm not saying. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. His, uh, well, his everything's going to good use in that chop shop. You know what I mean. Do anybody Cannot. speak Yosoki? Nope. Uh, not that you know of. Yeah, I'm basically gonna say, uh, don't put stuff in crazy <laughs> Yosoki and, uh, uh, continue making a program. Yeah, you tell me, old man. Has anything that Sammy has said giving <laughs> anything to me, like resonating somewhere hmm. at all? Uh, assuming that she describes the rat again, or the Yusoki, you, that Yusoki sounds awfully familiar. Do you? Was the... I mean, I'd say she would um, give their family name and stuff. I don't know his name, so... Is that any name that I have heard of? Uh, you make a culture check. And maybe I will be able to tell you. Because I do believe you have told me their name or something like that, so. Uh, which name specifically? The name of the Hisoki? Yeah, or the clan that he worked for. Yeah. Uh, he was... Radix, uh, he doesn't have a surname. Most Yusoki go without them. Uh, and the corporation he works for, or, well, works for, uh, he's actually an independent contractor. He just pretty much works for everybody. But he uh, does have a uh, wide net of scumbags, which I'm certain are having a lot of fun right now with a glitch goblin doing all kinds of bad things. Yeah, she's just going to giggle thinking about all the havoc that Sippy is causing, probably. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm guessing I don't make that connection because that was fairly vague. No, fortunately not. Uh, yeah. You are actually uh, immediately get a uh, encrypted incoming call, Magnus. <laughs> Excuse me for a moment. Can I go somewhere private or something? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. There's uh, there's three cargo holds with uh, various equipment in them. You can go find a a, a secluded corner. Right. And because you're on the ship, you're um, you can basically use its antenna. So, I really need to change this suit. Yes, hello. Uh, you get a bit of a, a staticky reply, and he goes, "Magnus, is that you, dear?" Lily. And you see the uh, the uh, the video call kind of comes up, and it's uh, pretty staticky. And he goes, "We just trans. We're just about to transition into the warp." I I wanted to say goodbye to you in case I didn't see you for a long time. They said you were fine. Are you though? How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm, I'm fine for the moment. Uh, you actually do see as it kind of clears up a little bit. Uh, probably as they're passing the relay right before the uh, warp transition, uh, you see that uh, she is wearing a mask, uh, like an oxygen mask. It was a little bit much on me, but well, the guards were very, very brave. They took the fire for us. Most of them paid with their lives, but they bought us the time to escape. We got onto one of the company ships and we're currently making making way <coughs> somewhere. They will not tell me, but I trust them. And I'm safe for the moment. Thanks to gods. 
Mm. Are you safe, Magnus? What happened to you? Well, I I fell and then I woke up and then I met a bunch of interesting people that shot their way out of the place. But I'm I'm fine as I usually am. Um, and now I'm on a ship. So it seems someone pulled some strings somewhere. I don't really know, but. I, I think I got off pretty well. I can work with this. Don't worry about me. Oh, my River Reed, I always worry about you. Please come back to me. I live for you. I... Can I still contact you with this? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, right. And uh, she sends over a new number. Uh, this is my new number on the ship for the time being, but given that we're transitioning to warp, it will be a while till I'm in contact again. Once I'm connected to the Galactic Infosphere, you should be able to <coughs> contact me as normal. All right. Assuming that... Oh, we're transitioning to the warp. I love you, my dear. Good luck. Take care of yourself. I love... And it goes out just as... Uh... You, you know that static, that's the static of someone, of a ship transitioning to warp space. I saved the number. Yep. You're able to save it as your your very own Lily. Uh -huh. So. All right. So uh, just out of curiosity, what time uh, did you guys want to end normally? I usually, I said it's about three hours, so ish. I mean, I'm fine. Uh, with, well, I'm fine with going to rest for half an hour, but how about you? I, I think I we think can we... wrap wrap up in half hours. That sound good to everyone? Yeah. Mostly, yeah. I also need to go by now. Mm. Right. So, I don't have vacation yet. That is next week. Oh. That's fine. I wouldn't mind. Uh, we've kind of wrapped up. The only thing I uh, would do is uh, the old dwarf would come back to you say, "All right, here you go. A little bit of spending money." Get anything you need, and, uh, well, like I said, don't go running off or you're going to get shot. Not by me. And he gives you each 500 credits. I'm just going to make a note of that. Question about one thing. Is that um, we don't have a game next week? We uh, do? Do we? Yeah. should. Or, or is it Christmas or something? Yeah. It's the 23rd. Why wouldn't we have a game? Yeah. Right, Christmas. <laughs> I mean, Christmas is after that. Yep. Assuming yeah. everyone's uh, able, yeah, we'll have a game the 23rd. I'm up for yeah, it. Able to. I think um, I am. And I, I would just like one. Help. I mean, I'm on go sure late. I can make it, but you can play without me if, if so, because I'm going to have a Lancer or a puppy or that I'm going to need to watch. Yeah, that's understandable. If, if you're okay with us going without you, and don't worry, we won't get you killed or nothing. <laughs> I'm um, not. I'm not that cruel. I do have a question for the captain. Um, how about uh, our quarters? You haven't shown us those. All right. All right. You're not usually getting around the dwarf ship. Die this way. Yeah, they ain't too much, but they ain't too little to get my drift. And, uh, he opens up to. Uh, you, uh, there's uh, two rooms. Uh, there are basically tw uh, six rooms, and each room has two bunks with uh, relatively nice beds and a small locker. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, is there an armory or anything like that where I can repair my armor or weapons, etc.? All right, just go down one level in the tech workshops on the left. Help yourself. But you break anything, you pay for it. You understand? Understood. He gives you a firm nod, and then he points you the direction. If you need any help, I'll be down later. I know my way around a few tools. Besides, don't you go into battle with that. You're not airtight, and you're going to need it if you're going to be scavenging wrecks. So, assuming uh, no one else has anything interesting to do, uh, we'll call it there. Have a bit of an early one today. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a administrative episode today. <laughs> yeah, it's just a kind of, uh, there's a lot going on between you guys, and now I, I kind of wanted to unveil at least a little bit that you realize there's more threads than one connecting you guys together. Oh, well, yeah. Apparently so. Uh, can I roll computers for the thing I wanted to make? 
Uh, what were you trying to make? An antivirus against Blitz Goblins. <laughs> Basically, um, that, uh, antivirus. Good luck with that. Yeah. That oh, how, how cruel. To, um, uh, the thing about glitch goblins is you generally just can don't let them in. Um, Zippy seems to be very good at getting past things, but you're also not exactly on his hit list, so you think you're probably okay. You can go ahead and try. Go ahead and roll a computer for me, and we'll have that be our last roll for tonight. You think it's at least is going to alert you when he if he tries to get in and stall him long enough for you to maybe you know take over manually to get rid of him. Or yeah, cloak your device. I mean, the guys... easiest thing to do would just basically put all your devices on autistic mode so that they don't connect wirelessly to anything, and then yeah. you'll be fine. He can't, he can't get there uh, if he, if there's not a uh, internet line. Because I basically want to have time to shut down stuff. If because I think if our friend has a glitch goblin, the enemy has a glitch goblin. They might, they might not. You know, you would know that glitch goblins, at least taming them or befriending them, is pretty damn rare. Which is why Jax is able to cause such uh, havoc all over the place, or Zippy is. <laughs> and Sammy yeah. is just contributing and making a friendship right now. He's never heard yeah, Zippy likes you, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't like her? <laughs> <laughs> you can't not like her. Yeah, and... she has charisma of like 20 or something. <laughs> Yeah, and I think th this guy thing I try to do is basic because he loves mischiefs, making a program that he can mess around without hurting anybody can get me on his good side. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Jax already likes you, and uh, that means Zippy probably likes you too. I mean, you've done nothing to them to, you know, warrant otherwise. I mean, the only person he might not like is probably Adnines, and only because he choked the shit out of Zippy. <laughs> but at the same time, Zippy also doesn't really seem to care. He hasn't done anything to you yet. <laughs> you know? I mean, look um, at him. He's so cute. No. Yeah, he is. No, he's I not. No, it's a question. Well, I mean, next session, I'm definitely going to have a chat with Magnus. Oh boy. <laughs> Looks like it's time for the therapy session. The whole world has some explaining to do. Yep. And then uh, well, next session will basically fit, uh, finish off with you guys saying your farewells to the planet and then we'll be moving on to basically the beginning of uh, what may be important, what may not be important. You never know. <laughs> I'm not going to give anything away. You know, the funny oh, thing no, is, we what? still haven't really introduced each other to us. To each other. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was going to say that. We just, we're kind of guardians of the galaxy yet. Yeah, but you know, I, I don't want to, you meet in a bar or, or you already know each other. It's no fun. Yeah. yeah especially exactly. with such a diverse cast of weirdos like you guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, look at I, mean, I, mean, I, I just wouldn't story. just trust anyone like that. It's probably much like your entire life story. If we meet like this and just. Uh, Build trust on the way. There we go. I like that. Same. Organically build trust. Hello, I and like long trust. I like long walks on the riverside and here's my social security number. Well let's see, what what would Adnines like? Well I like um I like choking people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> No, I wanted to say, like, I like long walks in the city, I like piloting, and I like ramming my ship into people, then gunning down the Viacorp directors, and making several personal complaints. And to make sure that my complaints are heard, I'm gonna fire them. I'm gonna fire them attached to my 9mm bullets. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> Your hobbies that are all fair. pretty specific. <laughs> I is pride it... myself on being a man of particular talents. A certain kind of talents that uh, would be very dangerous to people like you. Well, what can I say? I don't get pa paid extra for uh, for being... Um... Fuck, sorry. I don't get paid extra for being creative. <laughs> well, what I'm very interested in is what are you guys going to... Uh, you guys got a couple hours, you know. There's, there's a certain someone that you guys apparently are all really pissed at, so... Curious to oh. see how that's going to play. Oh, out. Uh -huh. 
There's a certain Soki that needs to get it. No, not that one. You already got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, I am right. totally Isn't clueless. I'm probably I don't know that, though. Right. Isn't... Over no, certainly clueless, probably. It's I mean, on... are you talking about the doctor? Nope. I was talking about the one that hired me. I guess you guys kind of forgot about this guy. Sorry. Oh, oh this I mean, technically, guy. I don't know if he did anything bad. Um, quick question: Is there an armory, and are there any grenades in said armory? Because I got a promise I need to carry <laughs> out. No, I literally not, forgot about that guy. Probably. I mean, can I create improvised explosive devices? Do you want to create a terrorist action when you're already on a short leash? <laughs> I mean, I'll be leaving soon anyway. <laughs> Assuming you can get away from the crime scene when they're actually looking for you. <laughs> I think we're going to have to leave that for next time. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sammy is he's going to sit by Jax and wait for Zippy to return and figure out what all the mayhem he did. And then she's going to look at him and be like, So, buddy, do you want to find out what we were even charged with at the okay. police station? Are you putting any zips back in? <laughs> I do want to know and... that. And there's going to be a lot of havoc. Well, I'll well, let you guys know that uh, when we get back to next session. I yeah, wonder why fun. I would be pissed off. I hope you guys had fun. Cough bear for a, uh, well, yeah, yeah, very fun. It definitely went a lot different than I expected. Because I wanted to do a... Um, prison break? Uh, yeah, prison break. Same. <laughs> That's how I imagine we got our ship. We just basically broke out. You can't just do two we, prison we breaks in a it. row. That's no, no, oh, nobody makes it either plot point. Like That's ridiculous. Okay, fair yeah, enough. They, yeah. You guys have plot armor, just not that good. Yeah. yeah. Fair yeah. Enough, fair enough. No, but no. Yeah, it's I, hope I've my uh, thoughts, so. I hope I've left plenty of unanswered questions for you guys. Uh -huh. Yep. Well, oh, definitely definitely. another lore drop for Sammy. I'm, I'm keeping oh, an shit. entire notebook of notes. Alright, so I'll yeah. see you guys next week. Yep, yep. see you. Yep, yep. Thanks. Thanks. see you later. Night, guys. Night. Night. Night.